This is a headgum podcast. This week on the program, would you stop worrying about Eddie? Because we're talking about The Exorcist 3. <laughs> I'm Andrew Jupin. Uh, Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Kevin! <laughs> <laughs> and we hate movies. <laughs> We all go a little mad sometimes. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Sometimes. That is what I... Zombies have entered the building. They're at the door. They're coming in. It is time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Seen one too many movies. Now, Sid, don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. What's the Excellent day for an Hello, everyone. Welcome to We Hate Movies. Thank you for tuning in. As always, that's right. The spectacular, still comfortably in franchise town with Exorcist 3 from 1990, directed by the man himself, William Peter Blady, based Ugh. on the novel Legion, also by William Peter Blady, and yep. starring the man himself, Mr. George C. Scott. That's my man. That's my man there <laughs> doing going in for uh, replacing a guy who does look almost exactly like him. Uh, Lee J. Cobb. They have very similar looks. Gentlemen with the, born with the faces of catcher's mitts. Yes. yes, exactly. Uh, and I, I love I Lee J. Cobb. throw my balls in that. <laughs> Stop throwing your balls in my face. <laughs> Get your balls out of here. And by the way, yes, it's okay to like a movie. I feel like I'm going to be crucified. Uh, sure. No, not, uh, you get it. You, I, I I don't like this movie, <laughs> Eric. I'm just gonna say I am the Exorcist three to your <clears throat> Rick Rosenthal's Halloween two. I think it makes total sense. I see what people maybe see in it, but at the same time, no, not I, for me. I <laughs> liked this movie less than I liked it the first time this time around, and I I, I mean uh-huh. I, I think I think George C. Scott is doing tr- tremendous work holding this thing up. Oh, and I mean some of, some of yeah. the directorial choices are, are are good, uh, and some of the themes are interesting, and some of the themes are not so interesting. Um, <laughs> so there's that. I, yes. I'm on the I'm on the Andrew side. I I really like this movie. Uh, I think a lot of it. I I also think uh, I have the Blu-ray for this, and the director's cut actually does make it better. Uh, really, damn, I, I've yet to I, see it. I was it curious too. about that. It's, actually, it, there, it fine tunes a few things. Like you see, uh, one major thing is that you see the body of the first priest that gets killed. Mm. Uh, you actually oh, see yes. it in in the in the uh, oh, stall. Wow, which, you could actually see stuff because here yeah, in yes. this movie. A lot of the murders are committed off screen. Yeah. And a lot of it is monologues and monologues. I feel like they got good actors. You know, George C. Scott and Brad Dourif, I think, are really holding it down. I don't think Blatty knows what he's fucking doing. I kind of agree with Eric. It's it's sort of it's it, it's sort of like uh, it it tells that this dude was a novelist. You know yes, what I mean? Like yeah. it's just we're just talking and talking the entire time, and you're not seeing a whole hell of a lot. And that, that, yeah, that absolutely. bugged me this time around too. Uh, but maybe that's a directorial fiddlesticks. I don't know. I totally get that too, and like you, know, we should say, um, uh, what's his face, uh, Bill, um, director Blatty. of the first film, William oh, Freakin. Oh, William yeah, Freakin. Billy Billy Freakin was supposed to do this. They both wanted to do it um, as like Blatty was like, let's do something as a direct sequel to The Exorcist, and then Freakin wasn't feeling it, and he wrote this book instead. And then Freakin, after uh, Borman did part two, Freakin was going to come back and do this. And then it fell apart, and that's how you get a novelist directing a film. Uh, right. uh, has anybody else? Seen, I, I assume somebody has seen Ninth Configuration. Yes. No. 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 It's his first movie. It's it's very similar to this as far as how it's cut. I think the problem here is that it, it has the title Exorcist Three. Yeah, like, sure it does. It, it should be a horror movie, and what he's making is like a almost like gothic drama. Oh, um, like, yeah, right. There's a gothic there, police procedural something. <laughs> yeah. like, yes, yes. <laughs> totally. Actually, you're right, absolutely right. And like, I really like that. And there is a George C. Scott when he took the role was like, why I did this. He's like, I don't really usually like horror movies, but like, I did this because it's a drama and it's a drama that I find interesting, and that's why I wanted to do it. Uh, I think, but it, yeah, t- 
to be clear, like the the fact that I don't get to see many dead bodies unless I watch the director's cut kind of sucks. You know what uh, I find interesting and I want to do? What? Hit play real quick. Oh, motherfucker. Uh, coming soon uh, to theater. That's already? right, motherfuckers. It's back. It's the VHS <laughs> trailer game. America's uh-huh. favorite game about obsolete materials. Now oh, in its boy. third season, you can't cancel us. We'll cancel you. Whoa. <laughs> I'll put that Damn. on a t-shirt. My God, you're a man possessed right now. I am the gym master, and your mother sucks cocks in hell. Wow. I am the gym master, and <laughs> these are my clues. Uh, this is season three. Uh, Chris Cavan, just as a recap, has won every season thus far. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to take, th- take it easy this season. I'm going to, well, you know. Hey, don't take a dive here. I think <laughs> the thing is this season, maybe we are Legion and all of our points combined. <laughs> oh, we are <laughs> Legion indeed, dude. I like that. Mm-hmm. Hey, okay. by the way, I just want to point out, uh, you know, because I know the first film, uh, The Exorcist, William Friedkin's The Exorcist, you know, very scary motion picture to a lot of folks. Sure. And it, you know, so some people may not have seen it. So I'll just say when Steve said that Eric, my and Chris's mother suck cocks in hell. Gotcha. That's a line from the first. Film. <laughs> it's a classic, <laughs> classic movie. Quote. Classic line. A- yes. AFI counted that one down. I think <laughs> yeah, yeah. he wasn't calling any of you out. He he doesn't have anything against any of your mothers. No oh, yeah. AFI's list of uh, 101 movies where mothers are told to suck cocks in hell. <laughs> um, so uh, just in case you're wondering, the way this game works is I will read off a game master's clue for each round, which is worth five points and then go through uh, varying uh, other clues until we get down to one point. So that's how that works. If somebody buzzes in and gets it incorrectly, they will be out for that round, but can come back in the next one. Uh, I had an idea for a fun uh, little cherry on top. I still don't know what the Chris Cabin trifecta mega prize is. That's, again, we've, we've, we've been talking about money <laughs> uh-huh. here, whether it's Barbados, whether I, it's... You I know, have an idea, Barbados. but we're going to have to talk about it off, off, off all right, mic, yes. I think. That's yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. He has to go into exile if he wins yeah. again. Yes. Right? It's, 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 it's not to, sex to, workers, dude. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, I'm sick I've, of talking look, about it. I'm going to go to a cave and I'm going <laughs> to contemplate it for a little bit and then I'll come back to you and we'll, but, we'll talk it out. Hey, what's wrong with paying for it? <laughs> uh, not on our card, my friend. Uh, no, so the uh, the idea that I had, uh, which I think just as a as a little cherry on top, you'll, you will get the the cameo slush fund for sure. Mm-hmm. But the winner of this game gets to choose a redo episode from like the Ooh. early days, oh. like a redo episode, like you know something we haven't done, like you know the show's now in its thirteenth season. Maybe you choose something from season one, two, or three. You know something mm-hmm. like that. Like an episode I like that, that man. You, yeah, I maybe you were yeah, on. That's cool. Maybe maybe you get a, one another bite at the apple, and it's all it's all on you. Nobody else gets to ch- say shit about it. Sure. That's I like it. I think that's a oh, great idea. Lock it in. Stamp that. It's been stamped. Okay, so here we go. Uh, <laughs> round one of season 13's in- inaugural VHS trailer. <laughs> inaugural. <laughs> inaugural ball. Um, <clears throat> game Master. By the way, this movie came out in 1990. These are This is from a UK VHS rip that I found oh, on boy. YouTube. Uh, but it's... Oh, these shit. Are all, okay. These are, I'm buzzing it now. Benny Hill. <laughs> uh, there is, there's no UK movies here. I just want to say that uh, it's from 1990. Just keep 1990. All these movies came out in 1990. They're a big Hollywoodish movie, so that, don't don't worry about the English part. Uh, the only reason, uh, blah blah blah. There's a UK VHS part at the end of it where this guy was telling you broadly. It's it, certificates tell you broadly what the film is like. It's an offense for your shop to supply an 18 tape to someone under the age of 18 because it <laughs> might contain sexual swear words. <laughs> sexual <laughs> swear words. Yeah, yeah, I like sexual. Well, if you like don't suck cocks in hell. If you don't <laughs> rewind this tape, you're taking a piss, mate. <laughs> Why? Round one. <clears throat> Game Master's Clue. Indie darlings use their largest budget to date to do their first period piece, a funny and violent mob tale. Indie darlings. <gasps> uh, Chris Cabin. That'd be Miller's Crossing. That is Miller's Crossing wow. coming yeah. off the job with five big points. Yeah, that's that's it. Uh, that was a hard period. one to do. Yeah, it, what's the period? What's the period? And indie yeah, darlings in the nineties. I mean, yeah, it's, it's 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 all them. It's all them. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Round two, game master's clue. 
a vulgar stand-up comedian has become a, vulvet, a vulgar private investigator. In the, uh, uh, that's Andrew Jupin. That would be Andrew Dice Clay in The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. <laughs> that is absolutely yes. correct. Yeah. Five wow. big points. And that's an example of a movie you could redo on this show. <laughs> yes. oh, that's, that's, right. that's an interesting point. Uh, I was thinking about it, man. Just rewind. That, that might have given me the idea because uh, it's like, man, I haven't thought about that movie in years. And boy, does that fucking uh, koala. He yeah. gets it. He gets you it do- good. You don't look down at your uh, suicidal uh, koala t- uh, tattoo that you have on the side <laughs> no, of the No, no. It's just. It's in a part of my body I can't really access anymore. Oh, that's, that's fair. <laughs> that's okay, Eric. That's okay, Steve. Uh, uh, FYI. No, uh, no, no. Put a board up that area. <laughs> it's closed for business. Abandoned. <laughs> um, this next trailer is a, this isn't a hit for anybody, but there are no fewer than three boom mics in this trailer. Ooh. I was stunned. I thought I was watching 90210 for a second. <clears throat> Game Master's Clue, a tough-as-nails action star, didn't see anything wrong with pitting himself against a gang of Jamaican drug dealers this time around. <gasps> That's Eric Siska. Marked for death? That is marked for death. For oh, five nice. Points. Look at this. Oh. A three-way tie nice. off the top. That was a hard one because it's just like there's nothing else to say, but you have to say Jamaican drug dealer yeah. or else yeah. it, you can't. <laughs> yep. There's no other way to describe that movie. And that's and how I got it. That's exactly how you got it. <laughs> wow. Look at that. I can't believe a three, three evenly. Look at this. Oh, and the yeah. game, you know what? We're done. We're done for the season. That's it. It's a three way tie. <laughs> Everybody wins. Yay. Yeah, Yay. We're happy. happy. Woo. All right. Well, I, I feel actually kind of bad. We have, I have one more clue here. And Fuck. I just. And so someone will feel better than the other two. That's the only way life has to work. <laughs> it's fine. Game Master's Clue. This sci-fi action sequel used a pseudo-futuristic urban nightmare as a change of secret. That's Andrew Jupin. That's got to be Predator 2. That is exactly Predator Ooh, 2. Nice. Andrew Jupin nice. the Futuristic right urban nightmare sequel. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> Coming in hot. That's, <laughs> That's awesome. it. <laughs> You know, maybe we should always do these in the morning when everyone says coffee and not alcohol. I, I yeah, know. that's true. That's maybe true. that's the difference. Yeah, Sitting here with my large iced coffee. This is one of the earliest times we've ever recorded an episode. There you go. Uh, so there you go. That's the that's VHS yeah. trailer game season one, uh, season 13, episode one, round yeah. one. We, we all did it. very well there. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Exorcist 3. Yes. You know, we start out at Georgetown back in D.C., the D.C. neighborhood from the first film, 1990. Um, you got Father Dyer here just staring at them steps, dude. Like, remember that time my best friend plummeted <laughs> to his death? Ah, memories. Well, I definitely haven't moved away from here. They, they, they bring you right back into the exorcist world by opening with rowing. Rowing yeah. down those oh, yeah. just, uh, I was watching they, the social they, network first. Yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> where the Winklevi? Uh, <laughs> the Winklevi. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, yeah, it's like this opens kind of dreamily. Like he's yeah. just walking down. And he, who does he bump into? I forget. Does he bump into somebody? Uh, who Father Dyer right here? Oh no, no, I'm thinking of the, the like uh, George C. Scott is like doing a dream thing where he sees the kid who dies in the beginning. Yes, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's I think that might be a little later because the oh, fr- okay. you're you're seeing like this. Yeah, it's all the you know the rowing practice and Father Dyer's watching the team like take the boat out of the water and like run by him and everything. And he's looking at the steps and then it cuts to George C. Scott, and I love this because the first line of this movie. Is George C. Scott literally just grunting? <laughs> like, yeah. It cuts to George C. Scott, and he's just like, I'm in the fucking Exorcist 3. <laughs> <laughs> he is like a like a you know a dog, like a junkyard dog in this fucking movie. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. dude. Who has not been fed in days. Because like the thing is, it's like, you know, I think the 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 log line for this character would be world weary. But he's yeah. just fucking sick of it. You know, there's, yeah, there's a little totally. difference between the two. Like, I feel like if you caught up, and this is, he is portraying, like we, we said at the top, um, unless we said it off the air, but no, this is, he, okay, <laughs> okay, he's playing Lieutenant Kinderman from the first movie, right? The Lee J. Cobb character. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's that thing of like, if you met him like a, like a week leading up to this, it's like, he'd be much more melancholy and just like, bah, bah. but like we meet him on the day of the anniversary of Damien Karras, the 15th anniversary of Karis falling out the window and dying. And he's now, it's like, not only am I world weary, but I am ready to go to hell tonight. Like if someone <laughs> came up to him and was like, 
hey man, for $5, I'll shoot you in the fucking head and kill you right now. This character would be like, <laughs> bring it on! Well, yeah, he's an old man and his movie buddy died. And like, yep. when you're an yep. old man, you need your movie buddies. They're it's totally few true. And far between, but they have to come back, and that's why God, God bless him. Uh, uh, this priest is going to become his new uh, movie buddy. Yes. <laughs> They're going out on a first date. To, uh, <laughs> it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful life. life. Oh yeah, well, that's not their first date. This is what they do because the first movie ends with the "Hey, yeah. do you like to go to the pictures?" Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So they've yeah, been doing right, this right, right. for so, a yeah, long, long, fifteen uh, years. Yeah, yeah. He but, asked him out at the end of the first one. He does. Yeah, he, he, he <laughs> shot his shot, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess you could say that whole the final <laughs> violent, violent end of that first movie. Was their meat cute? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very sweet. So. You hang around bloody steps all the time. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, I you will... uh, watch your friends fall out of windows often. The original uh, Father Dyer, uh, William O. William O'Malley, a Jesuit priest who taught my brother in high school. FYI, is that oh, right? Yeah, he he's a teacher at Fordham Prep, but uh, like. He, by all accounts, a really cool dude. And I was like, look, look it up his Wikipedia page. He wrote all these like interesting books. And then you go down, sexual assault claims. Oh. 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 Hold, on oh. Hold on a second. He was just trying to get the devil out of those boys. <laughs> yes. Oh, August man. 2019, O'Malley was accused nah. of sexually assaulting multiple <laughs> students nah. in, with all teaching in Rochester in the 1980s. Ugh. Fucking cool, dude. Not such a wonderful life. <laughs> <laughs> I feel way less bad uh, for that dude getting slapped in the face by William Friedkin making the first movie. <laughs> yeah. Does everybody, everybody knows that story? No. no. Of like, so it's the end of the movie where he, he he runs down the stairs and he's trying to give Damien Karras the last rites before he dies. Mm. And Friedkin was not pleased with the way the dude was delivering it. And so in between takes off camera... He fucking smacked this dude across the face, <laughs> like open palm nice. smack this priest yeah, across the good. face. And so when you see in the movie, he's going to do the last rites and he puts his hand up to do the sign of the cross and the man's hand is like violently shaking. <laughs> it's actually shaking because he had just been slapped in the face by William Friedkin. <laughs> you know, and there's a uh, palm but, on his cheek. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of fingers. <laughs> as, a, as a very, uh, uh, no, no longer a Catholic anymore, well, you were... You're within your rights to slap any priest, I think. You're oh, like, yeah. you've yeah. got a 70% success rate if you're slapping a priest. Absolutely, yeah. man. Take that shot. That's a shot you take. <laughs> oh, and, oh, yeah. I'll take those Vegas odds. <laughs> and, and, and ask Friedkin for it, and Friedkin would be like, you're lucky you got all the way with that. I could do a lot worse. Don't yeah, you he's going to kick him in the balls. Chicago I'll kill you. Freed kid. Yeah, I was eating a dog and I slapped a priest in the face <laughs> with the hot dog. So you ever, ever slapped in the face with the hot dog? Oh. It's like getting slapped yeah. in the face with a more delicious dick. It, it was five hot dogs. He thought it was my hand. <laughs> he ordered it. He ordered it without the tomato. I mean, this is just, this is not respect. You know, you got to punch him right in the yeah, cheek. Yeah, you got to put a full that. tomato and a full pepper on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't score with me. Don't give me a regular bun. Some sesame seeds on the bun, please. Some, some little nice. Come on. Please, guys, we're doing this episode before lunch. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I was, you know, I was a little bit, you know, uh, bummed to see him recast because I do, I do like that performance from him in that first movie, even though, you know, all the hey, things. So, so sure. 2019, that goes down, dude. We're in 2022 right now. That dude uh, shuffle off the mortal coil. Yet? No, he's still kicking somewhere. Oh, uh, yeah. is he in? Uh, he's he's been defrocked, I imagine. <laughs> or did he get? Or did he get moved around? But I, I, it just says that the allegation, so it, do, it doesn't oh, seem like anything. Just yeah. fine. Yeah, he's probably but, just. Well, you know, the Catholic Church, man, they do like the fucking little ball under the cup game. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, where's, the, where's the fucking rapist? Oh, he's under that ball. Then swish, 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 move now all those cups in, around. Now he's in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and, then all, and his parish is unsuspecting, and they're ripe for the plucking, I guess. You know? Oh, yeah, that's how uh, the Catholics do it. Steve, when you said that you wanted, uh, uh, you, you missed it, that, that you wanted back, I thought you meant you wanted William Freakin back to punch priests. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> that's what we got a couple of ideas. Or, or, yeah, do, or, do, list. or direct this goddamn movie. Yeah, 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 also that. Uh, so we get, I, I think, this really chilling sequence of POV, and you're hearing some voiceover talking about, like, I have this dream of falling down this narrow staircase and all this stuff. And it's like, you don't see who it is, and we're we're definitely walking out where the camera is the eye here. We're focusing, we're looking at kids. 
here's a kid. We're looking at kids. Yeah. And then, boom, cut to this fucking dead kid by the river. George C. Scott looking at this body like, uh, God damn it. <laughs> some, some great groaning, some great size he's doing here. This is, I mean, it's, it, it's really a symphony of groans and sighs <laughs> that go on in this. But, like, again, you're not seeing the... I, I th- for this one I kind of like it like I yes, just being I agree like wh- what what just describing what happened and not really showing the the kid being decapitated. Um, yeah, sure. And I mean I I thought it's a pretty good uh, setup for like where this is gonna go for him just to be like yeah you know what I'm gonna leave I'm just gonna <laughs> go to the movies somebody else take care of this I'll be back to take care of it tomorrow. Yeah, I let need me know go- when you slop it into a van. <laughs> I need some Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> it is kind of, I mean, also like the idea of watching It's a Wonderful Life after a murder is kind of got to be difficult. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because like, that movie is not as chipper cheery as it, uh, as, as it no. purports itself to be, as we remember. No, see our episode on it. But so then you're like just sitting there. You're just weeping, dude. You're just weeping the mm-hmm. whole time. That's the thing, man. If they had footage of him watching the movie, it would be the second time in cinema history you'd see George C. Scott crying in a movie theater. <laughs> Turn off the Jimmy Stewart. Turn it off. So sad. <laughs> I can't believe Uncle Billy fucked with the money again. What a son of a bitch. <laughs> How do you fuck that up? <laughs> Why is there a fucking bird in the bank? Kill him. Kill him, Jimmy. <laughs> Oh, I've got my hands on that rotten Mr. Potter. See, now this I would love. I, I, we couldn't. It would be really tough uh, if if we did like a, a, a fake commentary where it was like three of us and then one of us playing George C. Scott <laughs> riffing It's a Wonderful Life. But like we would have to record it in bursts or the one of us playing George C. Scott would have to switch out when the person's fucking throat burst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, all right, Andrew, go back to talking like Andrew, Steve, tag in. Now you're George C. Scott. Yeah. An ivy drip the movie. of an ivy drip of a uh, hot tea with lemon, please. Uh, yeah, Just go absolutely. right down. <laughs> but imagining George C. Scott fucking heckling It's a Wonderful Life in a movie theater is now something I hope I dream about at night at some point. <laughs> This movie really needs George C. Scott in a huge way, and he's oh, fa- yeah. he's fantastic. Um, and he, he's he had a great career as an older actor. Um, also playing, um, stepping into Lee J. Cobb's shoes yet again in uh, William Friedkin's TV movie remake, which is better than it sounds of Twelve Angry Men. Even oh, though, oh yeah, it's uh, it's, good. it's it's a good cast. It's because it, it's, you know it's a stage play. You know what I mean? You just get a good cast, you'll get a good cast. And that's Wasn't that like literally the last thing he did? No, they also he followed it up with an inherent the wind remake because it was like him and oh. Lemon like doing movies for Showtime for a little while. Like oh, they were- <laughs> yeah, I kind of remember this happening. Yeah, yes. I remember Lemon getting into it too. Okay, inherent the wind is the last thing he did. Um, okay, okay, which is like two years ago. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, like I, it's it, it's interesting that he's playing Lee J Cobb's character because. He's the same age as Lee J. Cobb was when he made The Exorcist. So it's like, <laughs> I'm a fucking vampire. All right, the night, the night that Karis went down, yeah, I got bit by a fucking vampire. <laughs> I'm an immortal 60-year-old man. A lot of shit going down that night. I got turned into a vampire. A fucking mummy was loose downtown. <laughs> broke out of the National Archives. It was fucking ridiculous. Not to mention the Gemini killer. I need a Renfield. Where are my Renfields? You could pick up a new movie friend that way. They can go see, you know, Mur- Murnau's Sunrise and all that. <laughs> sure. Um, one of my low-key favorite, like, idiot characters in this movie is Jim, Father Dyer's priest friend. Or not a priest friend, but, like, um, he's like, I don't, Steve, what would this guy be? Because he's too old. He's not an altar boy. This oh, nerd guy that's Kevin Oh, Corrigan. Kevin Corrigan, baby. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. That is Kevin Corrigan. Is that? He's playing Jim. Is he supposed to be an altar boy or it what's says, going on? It here? says altar boy uh, in the in the whatever. Okay. Jim the altar boy. I, I, yeah, he might be like an older altar boy kind of a thing. Oh, no, he's actually do. It sounds like he's a seminary student because he says something, something. I didn't do well on this test or something. I oh, think he's a seminary yeah, okay, student. Okay, that's right. Right, because he, he like equates the power of God with like what a power motor or something. And he's yes. getting chastised for having that in his uh, attempt at, I guess, a sermon of some kind. 
And this, also, even even as they get older, the priests always do like their uh, boys to be boys. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I got to tell you, man, listening to Kevin Corrigan, especially early Kevin Corrigan, I feel like I'm right on fucking Pelham Parkway again. This broad sex <laughs> oh, yep. is delicious. Dude, it's awesome, man. It's like he fucking rose from the grave beneath <laughs> Yankee Stadium. <laughs> it's incredible. But he, it's so funny because he tries to talk to Father Dyer about Karis here because again yes. it is it's the exact to the day 15th anniversary of the exorcism and the, and his death and everything and he's basically you have Kevin Corrigan <laughs> just being like hey Father Marin you uh you remember the first movie or what <laughs> and this dude's like get the fuck out of here Jim like is he just does not want to talk about it hey Father Dyer you th- is it true that uh Fred got to slap you in the face a couple times <laughs> how'd that feel that must have felt like shit. I got. I gotta say. Hey. Also, can I get a chopped cheese in Georgetown or what? Ooh, yeah. I bet you can't. No, I don't think so. And that's too bad. Uh, but yeah, he's he's out of the movie, unfortunately. Even though the great, he's the great character, Kevin Corgan. Love that guy. Um, totally. Um, we meet George C. Scott. Uh, at the detective station for a little bit because like Father Dyer's trying to get out of the, the church because he's they have this movie date and he tells <laughs> Kevin Corrigan that he's fucking seen this movie 37 times. That's terrible. Uh, so he's getting ready and then George C. Scott's trying to get out of the, the precinct here uh, to go to his movie date and you meet some of the detectives. One is the uh, the guy who played Marty McFly's grandfather. Who the hell is John F. Kennedy? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> that guy. And then yeah. this other dude who George C. Scott uh, accuses of being anti-Semitic, yeah, due to like some police report that the guy filed, uh, filed or something like that. And the guy seems kind of he's not like really disputing the charges. <laughs> no, no, he's okay he's with not. it, dude. <laughs> no, nope, he's, he's definitely, definitely not. And was, George, C- yeah, go ahead, Steve. That was 1990. Like you could just get away with being like, "Listen, this is what I'm like. Love it or leave it." It's I, like I don't know, dude. <laughs> leave it. I think this guy is one of, in Die Hard 3, he's like one of the, when they have to brief him about who Jeremy Irons is, mm-hmm. I think he's one of the guy, the guy with the glasses that's chewing on his glasses. Trying oh, to right. butch up by I, chewing on your mm, glass. Yeah, Got it. I think that's him. Oh. I, I could use more of these police guys. I yes. Like, flesh them out more than just being vaguely anti-Semitic. And well, spe- um, speaking of Die Hard, though, because the other cop is Grandel Bush. Oh, yeah. Mm. From Die Hard 1 and, more importantly, Balrog from Street Fighter. Absolutely. <laughs> You're right. My apologies. Yes, that's the important film. <laughs> uh, But so George C. Scott is like, all right, you fucking anti-Semite. <laughs> I want the file on the Gemini killer. And they're like, but he got the electric chair 15 years ago. And he's like, I know he did. So why don't you go get it? And then you can go. And he turns to specifically to the racist guy. I love it's it so incredible. Much. He's like, all right, you give me the file. And then you can go to your, go home to your families. Talk about WAPs. <laughs> like, he's just, I know you're going to go home and you're going to be fucking racist again. All right. I think rabies are rabbis, huh? <laughs> Read yeah, oh, Beth. That's what it is. That's what it is. Cause it's something in the file about something, something, a rabies scare. What's rabies. And it's like, it's what it's a Jewish priest, and you don't want to make them mad. And fucking George just got <laughs> furious. Yeah, it's like a Don Rickles joke. It's a Don Rickles joke that this yeah. guy wrote in a report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be pissed too, honestly. I I love this thing where it's like, yeah, I know the fucking Gemini killer's back, and who knows how about one of my best friends. But I got to get to the... Oh, shit, it's at 3.15. Christ, I'm going to miss the dancing popcorn. I'm not going to go home to my mother. Uh, let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Come on, guys. Let's all go. Let's just... Let's, Grand L. Bush, you want to go see It's a Wonderful Life? He has a, he has a police officer escort him to the movie. Dude, yes. <laughs> sirens and lights on the whole fucking thing. I don't, he doesn't want to miss the previews, you know? Like they, I'm picturing right before he pulls up to the movie theater, this fucking squad car goes over a hill. There's two guys trying to carry a huge pane of glass across the street. <laughs> they drive right through it. I gotta get to the fucking movie! And when he gets there, Father Dyer's like at the concession stand. He's like, what are you doing? We're gonna miss the start of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> what are you fucking around with lemon drops for? 
Well, I, I think this is a pretty, he calls it an addiction and I believe it. He's like tapping on the glass, scratching his wrist. Like <laughs> yeah. I need the lemon drops. I, 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 I can't watch this movie without lemon drops. Come okay. on, George, Scott, just wait. While you're, while you're buying those lemon drops, let me tell you about this live fish I have in my bathtub. <laughs> that, is- by the way, would have been a very interesting scene to see or have George C. Scott fight a live fish in a bathroom or whatever. <laughs> I, I fully yes. agree. Right. But instead Absolutely. we're just talking about this carp that you have to buy it. La- she like, or the, what the mother or the mother-in-law buys it live so that yes you can it's like a fresh and there's not it tastes like better a, yeah yeah so fresh kill it's just yeah. crazy to do this whole little little monologue about a fish going up and down your bathtub and i never see the fucking fish <laughs> well that's the thing like, i gotta go home I gotta wait for the fish to fall asleep because i can't stand it going up and down my bathtub i haven't taken a bath in three days that's the fucking funniest part is, and I haven't bathed in three days. And I'm like, oh, man, Father Dyer, fucking It's a Wonderful Life is like two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. You're going to sit through this fucking stink wad next to you? Come on. I mean, this happens right. This is that's the conversation that happens after they get out of the movie. Yes. And, yes. And be, but like it, it is amazing that like Kinder Boo just like smell me, Dyer. <laughs> you smell it it's a funk isn't it i haven't bathed in three days because that, that, that's the thing we're doing the we love our george g scott hardcore a lot of this is very like low-key very oh my mother of god my george g scott kind of thing you know what i mean yes. he's very like quiet about a lot of this performance which i do again i do really like and he's just like father you're standing very close to me you understand uh what do I smell like? I smell like shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> kind of if, if you've been smelling ass lately, it's uh, it's me. It's a ball smell, funk. Smell like an anchovy's asshole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I ran out of toilet paper. The missus is using it as a pillow for the fish. <laughs> <laughs> my mother-in-law <laughs> called my daughter Pocahontas. I might just join the fish and drown myself to get out yeah. of this. Because there's that, one that, scene that is later. A great line that happens later, isn't it? Ugh. There's a later scene where he's like just reviewing files at his uh, kitchen table. Really cozy. So much, which I do appreciate about this movie, is it gets the and I, 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 I it gets the coziness of The Exorcist correct. Like <laughs> yes. that is it's because like it's just like for the most part like yeah there's there's you know people inserting crucifixes inside their vaginas, young girls, etc. It's, it's really really uh, dramatic and scary. But uh, the rest of that movie is quite comfortable, and it's just like people <laughs> yeah. having low key conversations. Like yeah. we're playing piano, we're smoking cigarettes, and like this even like this like diner or this like really nice restaurant scene. I'm like, yeah, this is the exorcist I love, the cozy it, part. It feels lived in. Although the first movie, I feel worked better as lived oh, yeah. in than this. But yeah, oh yeah. But it's time. like like the vibe you get in all the non scary parts of the first Exorcist film is like. Someone has just put on a fresh pot of coffee, yeah. <laughs> and yes. it's and it's a fresh pot of coffee that you could smell like in the morning or early afternoon, where you're just maybe sitting around the kitchenette reading the paper, smoking seven thousand cigarettes because it's 1974, yep. right? Or it's a late night pot of coffee, right? We had nice dinner, <laughs> had the aperitif, <laughs> so we got a, a jolly priest playing the piano. You know, we're all singing, <laughs> pot of coffee on either and beautiful sweaters the interiors mm-hmm. of oh, reagan's yeah. house like just yeah oh my god yep i i it, it, it that's that i do like this this restaurant scene with larry king and c everett coop yep. no what dialogue the fuck? no <laughs> so dialogue weird and like i'm sorry you got larry king to sit for this movie you gotta have him say something <laughs> exactly i mean maybe it's just something about white fish who cares yeah, like you know sending something back yeah. peter peter <laughs> Why do you want me to uh, cast Larry King and see ever coop in this? Well, it's for uh, the believability. It's, <laughs> it, it's the exorcist, Peter. Well, no, you got to believe they're in Georgetown. I'm like, oh, OK, I guess. <laughs> like, is that it? It's like, that, yes. that doesn't convince me. Like, you could just put Georgetown and show the fucking rowers. I'm good. Well, the thing is, I think, you know, Blatty is a little too. He's, he's having too much fun he, here because he does so many stupid fucking cameos in this movie that I don't yes. get the point of. They're. I, absolutely distracting i i think it works really well in the dream but here i was ge- i genuinely was like what the fuck is larry king coming back is yes he well, that's in this? it's weird because I, I can sort of see it right it's like you have a journalist of sorts with the i don't even know if he was still the surgeon general at the time maybe maybe not you know so that's like sort of dc politicking thing kind of and then the other weird thing which like i had to read about i'm not saying this as if i 
recognize these people immediately, but like Patrick Ewing in the dream sequence is not the only basketball player in this movie because Blatty was like a massive Georgetown Bulldogs fan. So there are like legendary Georgetown Bulldogs and coaches and shit like walking by oh, interesting. at various points. And it's like, hey, man, that's for you <laughs> and yes. like 70 other people. Other uh, than that, it's very distracting and bizarre. Yes. yes. By the way, internet ticker, uh, Sierra Everett Coop stepped down from uh, uh, Surgeon General in 1989, which I guess opened the doors for him to be in this movie. <laughs> I have to step down from being the Attorney General because I've accepted a role in The Exorcist 3, <laughs> and it was a yeah. conflict of interest. Yeah, eating a sandwich while... <laughs> Practically <laughs> off screen. Anyway, this, but this is he, my act two. I now become an actor. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, f- uh, oh, um, I, I, now I have an agent. Oh, I'm taking calls from Clint Eastwood. <laughs> uh, also, kind of exorcisty about the trivia on his IMDb, by the way. Died of cardiac arrest on January 29th, 2004, but was brought back to life by doctors. Wow. <laughs> Until wow. 2013. And wow! You know what? I'd rather have Zombie. that than it, I'd rather have that than the sexual assault allegation subheading. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah, there's. You know what? I would much rather have part of my Wikipedia talk about how I died this one time and came back. <laughs> Maybe a zombie. I can survive that. Ooh, I like I, that. I'm fine with if. If I'm almost a zombie, that sounds good. Uh, so we're told, you know, this dead kid uh, was named Thomas Kintry. Yeah. Uh, he had ingots driven into his eyeballs. They cut his fucking head off. Yeah. And yeah. then they cut off the head of a statue of Christ. This is so Painted weird. it in blackface and put the head of the statue back to the bodies where the head would be. That's it, Gemini Killer. You are canceled. You see this? No <laughs> yeah, that's it. You, you, don't be bringing this back. You know, it history is where it should be. A fucking insane thing to do right yes. like yes. that is just above and beyond and it's i mean and again like we do actually this we do see at the end that it's like well, holy shit yes um, <laughs> uh but you know I, I i at this point i i'm with i i'm not with her because i do think at the beginning like talking about stuff is kind of interesting it's kind of drawing you in like oh man all this stuff that we're not seeing and we're just kind of figuring it out yeah but what wh- as the movie goes on and this keeps happening and you're like you know what else he did to him? Like, I don't care anymore. Like, when, when, <laughs> when like, these, like, the, the, the nurse gets it, and it's like, and then, you know, oh, my God, I can't even say it. She was stuffed with rosary beads. And I'm like, was she? How? <laughs> and also, like, let me at least have any way to experience that as opposed to someone tearily telling me about it. You know, I think yeah. you're right that we are being brought into the world, like, a little slow, and that's nice. I just feel like there's something... Maybe it's the way the movie's shot. It like almost feels like TV here. I, I don't know if the Ooh, DP did a great job. I, yeah, I can see that here. It's not, I don't think, particularly cinematic. Oh, by the way, I left off uh, a, a crucial detail of this poor murdered child. Uh, after all that stuff that is also reeled off, uh, just a little cherry on top, he was also crucified. Oh, sure. Uh, on uh, rowing oars. Those, yep. those, yeah. Probably those very same rowing oars we saw in the beginning of the movie. That's right. That is right. God. Uh Damn, they yeah. really, really killed that. The kid. Ivy League needs to stop this crew nonsense until we figure out what's going on. Yeah. There is this kind of cool thing that this effect they do a couple of times. Uh, it happens. This happens, I think, early in the movie, like right before the dream sequence. You just in a Catholic church, and you know Jesus is on, uh, on the cross, his eyes are closed, and this wind comes in, like this yeah. evil wind comes in, and the eyes open, and Jesus is like. Oh, what now? What? <laughs> yeah. it, it's just like this. It's like this, like droopy eyed, like, oh boy, it's Satan again. Isn't it? oh, so nice. you, know, you know what it looks like, Steve? Is like if you watched one of those, like, Rankin and Bass ish, cheap ass 1970s Christian things where it's like, here's a story about Jesus. And like, this is like the Jesus puppet, like the eyes opening, like waking up in the morning or something like that. It's not particularly scary, is what I'm getting at. No, it's pretty funny. But what is particularly scary, I think, I think the first like truly scary scene in this movie is uh, this confessional scene that's happening. Yeah, I agree. So we see this priest go in. Um, and he's taking confession from folks and you hear it's this little old lady's voice and oh, I had 38 sins this week, father, and like starts listing them off and everything. And then like 
just the way that this is written is so eerie. Like she just turns into talking about killing people, and it's like, yes. and then there was all this bleeding, and like this priest getting freaked the fuck out. It's it's, all, it's really well done. It's all this bleeding, and then they didn't take my coupons, and I <laughs> argued with the man because I said that I could get two Kit Kats for the price of one, according to their little magazine pullout. But no, so I killed him. I killed him right there. Another one of my sins, Father, was that I went to the movies and saw something that was terribly confusing. And when the lights came up, I used the Lord's name in vain. And I said, God damn it, did anyone get it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I was, I, 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 I certainly wouldn't have had time to kill that young girl if my grandson came over and fixed my VCR like he said he would. <laughs> but, you know, you know 4 p.m. came and went, and I'm like, well, Granny's going killing. <laughs> the young man on the street came up to me and said, that's too many newspapers you have in that bag there, madam. And I was like, no, it's not. It's too few. Why don't you buzz off, mister? Uh, so this priest we find find out gets super fucking murdered um and george c scott like at the crime scene i love all this like we're dusting down the confessional you know oh, it, was a, it was terrible it was a super murder <laughs> worse than a regular murder <laughs> um but you know he's like oh, why don't you dust the other side of the sliding door and the guy's like well, why? The only person on that side that touched it was probably the priest. What do you want to do that for? And he's like, because I'm patting the job. <laughs> like he just yells at him. Yes. I'm patting the job. The best thing is they uh, to prove this th that that his inclination is correct. They like build yes. a separate <laughs> yes. sliding thing. Yeah, yeah. Just to like prove that yeah. they should, should take a look at this. Just yeah. listen to him. Listen, I need the overtime, to be honest with you. I'm going to be working very late because I need the overtime. Listen, like I It's like uh, the fucking staircase when they're trying to like simulate the yes. fucking you know blood splatter pattern and they build like the actual staircase model and just do it repeatedly it they is. gotta build that confessional <laughs> and that's the thing, I, that's some of the stuff that i like about this movie the procedurally stuff like the dryness of that I yeah don't mind. uh especially later with the what do you call it the hedge clipper thing it's just pretty cool like that scene is interesting but again like it's just sort of like a lot of it just turns into monologue, which is, again, yes. like you've got great actors, but I kind of want to see some stuff. Yeah. Oh, also, by the way, um, the guy playing that priest is uh, one Harry Carey Jr. Oh, wow. Oh, that's insane. Yeah. Yep. Wow. As, uh, what is it? Father Canavan is this character's I, name. I, I will say that the, having the body in this shot really does help because it punches in the one thing that we haven't seen. We don't see the bodies. Really. Yes. Yeah. Right. Like, to have at least one image of it really does help, I think, move it along when because w the other deaths that happen, at least uh, uh, the next one is interesting, at least because the process is interesting. Like mm -hmm. when they're talking about it, I don't mind the monologuing so much in that one. But you're right, yeah. especially as this goes on, like it's just George C. Scott having to listen to people, you know, be yeah. annoyed. <laughs> I think this would actually work very well like as a play. And mm, yes. there's not too many locations. And sure. even then, like like if you're doing a play, I could see getting into like the carp stuff as a as a as a dipping your toe into the world type of thing and 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 the slow expansion. And then the monologuing would make more sense. And the and the camera here, I, I looked the guy up. He actually um shot a Highlander, which is surprising. But Ooh. I just feel like they're the it's not cinematic. Well, well, Eric, yeah. don't you understand that uh, he's the carp? <laughs> <laughs> He's um, swimming back and forth, just waiting for death. I mean, I'm the it's, fucking it's, carp, Chris. Well, yeah, well, yeah, that too. I think we're all the carp is really the point. Uh, just a quick FYI, the lady who does, who I believe does the voice of the uh, creepy old lady who uh, is credited as Satan voice mm -hmm. is a woman named Colleen Dewhurst. Yep. Uh, she was married to George C. Scott not once, but twice. Uh, wow. And his Campbell Scott's mother. Uh, wow, 61 to 65, divorced two children. Then they gave it another shot again in 67 to 72, and that didn't work out. Uh, Ooh, wow. Yeah. We gave it our best. <laughs> Listen, I got a great pick for Satan. It's my goddamn <laughs> twice over ex wife. <laughs> Take your hair, stand up on end. <laughs> my God, I used to call her the Prince of Darkness. <laughs> oh, she'll be convincing, all right. Don't worry about that. <laughs> You say that's all you want to use it for? Is that one line? She could be the villain of the fucking movie! 
She's certainly been the villain of my fucking savings account. <laughs> Do you got somebody to play the evil nurse at the end? You get her. <laughs> Double rows. I don't need to give you alimony this month, Colleen, because you're the exorcist three because of me. <laughs> That's a job. That is money in your pocket. You're welcome. <laughs> George, George, we talk about this all the time. I don't always do the evil voice, just, you know, on the special <laughs> occasions, special occasions. So why don't we all yeah, calm down? Yeah, I need to get it up. Yep. <laughs> yes, that's that's true. My my, my love, my love. <laughs> uh, so what they determined from this staircase-esque forensics investigation is that uh, the prints, they do find prints of the killer because the killer had to go to the other side of the confessional to close it all the way so that uh, parishioners would keep coming in to do confession and not yeah. notice that there was a murder scene. Yada, yada, yada. Finds out, gets the prints, and uh-oh, he is convinced that the prints on the statue head that were placed by the kid's body are going to be the same prints that yes. are on the door of the confessional slider. And uh-oh, that is not the case. Uh-uh. Uh-oh. And you can tell the, the the forensics guy is like standing there with the report, and he's like, and of course, and the George C. Scott's like, of course, you see, yeah, they're the the, the two prints are the same, right? I mean, they are, right? I was I was planning on going home. These are the right. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the goddamn carp is still there. <laughs> the guy, yeah, I mean, because the guy kind of just gives a like he he shakes his head like, uh uh-uh, uh, sorry, motherfucker. Um, and then this, so this is where we get. He's so pissed off. I guess he just goes home. Thought he had the whole case solved. And then we get this dream sequence, man. And I think for all the eerie stuff in this dream sequence, of which there's a lot. Yeah. One of the eeriest parts for me is not even when we uh, are in the dream world, but when he's going to sleep, him and his wife in the bedroom, you got this music box playing to no, lull yeah. you to no, sleep? No, thank, no, I mean, thank, no, thank you. you. <laughs> no, no, no. It's before the white noise machines, which, you know, you know, do me a, a qu- quite a wonder. But man, yeah. oh, man, not an eerie music box. <laughs> you're, 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 you're asking to get haunted. You want mm-hmm, your house yeah. to be pre-haunted. This is a, an oh, yeah. invitation to a All right, right ghosts, I'm going to sleep. Do your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Start singing to me. So in the in the Exorcist, he only, Kinderman only talks about his wife, his wife, his wife. He never says anything but a kid. And yeah. the girl is probably about 15. 16 so that scans so you and your wife after the event of the exorcist <laughs> yeah. you're like well mother i'd like to bring another wife into this world like no thank you dude not with the, not with the devil snatching people left and right that's the thing man like at least move before you start a family <laughs> exactly like, like satan or you know the de- the demon pazuzu who's pretending to yeah. be satan by the way it was not ex- uh, yeah. satan specifically but like either way dude Demonic forces have found your fucking block of DC. It's time to it's time to pack up shop. I love man. that stolen valor. That Bazuzu. Hey, you know you're not Satan. The the Satan his patches go there on the uniform. <laughs> well, I mean that, it, it, but that is very much what a priest would do, right? Like you have all these allegations that you are fucked, that evil is one, that you are you your thing is fucking corrupt as well. And what you do a show of force. I'm gonna have a fucking kid. Let's see you possess this kid. <laughs> you should use it as a human shield throughout the movie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just see, I, I bet you you can't fucking possess this kid. Go go on, Satan. Sam Hain. <laughs> uh, so the you know this is the heaven sequence, the very bizarre God damn. heaven sequence. Do, uh, it, I mean, I it, it's kind of cool the ending of this sequence and yes. what happens, but like I really don't need he- the heaven airport that's purgatory. <laughs> and who's there? Well, of course, Fabio's an angel because look at that angelic face. Let's let's you know let's linger on it for a minute and then forget what we're fucking doing and forget what this movie what? is and instead think of People Magazine. During the sequence, it's true because the first thing he sees, not the first thing, but like the kid, uh, whatever his name is, Tommy or Billy or whatever the hell his name is, comes up to him and he's got like creepy eyeballs and he's got like a Frankenstein, his head has been reattached kind of a thing. Yeah, and it's unsettling. And he's like, he's like, and it's like, oh, and you know, it's like weird, dreamy stuff where he's like, I'm sorry, I'm dead. He's like, oh, Billy, I'm so sorry you got murdered. You know what I mean? Which (laughs) is like, man, (laughs) it is that is so fucking funny though, dude. Uh, The kid, I think the kid's name is Thomas. Thomas, sorry, okay, is is what it is. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like, like, oh, hey there, Thomas. Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry you got murdered. <laughs> it's just like better luck next to, time, Tommy better, boy. Yeah, totally. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go here and talk to Fabio about roller coasters or whatever. <laughs> hey, hey, Thomas, is that Chihuahua yours? Or did you just got dogs up here? 
That's pretty cool. They got dogs up here. <laughs> well, whose band is this? It seems like a nice number they got going here. What? <laughs> yeah, whatever this fucking band from some David Lynch short, dude. Yeah. yeah. Freaking me the fuck out, those and people. Of course, you have little people carrying a uh, clock, which always reminds me. Anytime I see like little people used as a freaky dream image, I think of the great movie Living in Oblivion with uh, yeah. Peter Dinklage talking to uh, Steve Buscemi, and it's like because it's freaky, you know? <laughs> exactly. He's <laughs> like, well, why, what, why, what's so weird about this? He's like, where are you going to walk in, and you're going to. It's just freaky. It's, just like this, <laughs> oh it's this really hilarious yeah, yeah. conversation between the two of them that I always think about. Um, I found because I wrote down George C. Scott's line verbatim, and it's actually even weirder because the kid comes up. He's like, how you doing, Lieutenant? And George C. Scott, by the way, has said he knew this kid from yeah. some like community program or YMCA thing or something. And he's just, I'm so sorry you were murdered, Thomas. I miss you. Like, no, you don't, George C. Scott. What are you talking about? You're just supposed I miss to you. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's just awkward. You don't know what you're supposed to say to somebody who's dead. Oh yeah, I miss you so much. Oh. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I guess that's fair. You, um, you, you are missed. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I miss yes. you anyway. Goodbye. I'm gonna go talk to Fabio. <laughs> yeah, 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 get the I, fuck I, out of the way. I see Fabio. Here. Now, <laughs> now, Patrick, how did you guard? Well, how, how do you do on the court when it, when it's all those eyes on you? How do you do it? Holy shit. Get the fuck out of here, Thomas. It's Patrick Ewing, my favorite. Wow. He throws him to the floor. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, I, honestly, you're better than David Robinson, right? You're better than David Robinson. You, 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 just, just say it, Patrick. Just you say it. Well, look, we're up here at the pearly gates. You can just say it to me. I'm not going to tell nobody. Come on. I see. Patrick, I, 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 I know this is a dream, but could you sign my arm? <laughs> Does anybody have a Sharpie? Yeah, he wakes up and looks, looks at his looks at his arm and is like, damn it. <laughs> oh, it didn't, didn't transform, trans, trans over. <laughs> he wakes his wife. Honey, I had the Patrick Ewing dream again. Uh, <laughs> first, I talked to some dead kid, Fabio, for about 45 minutes. And then, wow, Patrick Ewing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, honey, honey, wake up, wake up. Yeah, I, just had, the, I had the dream again, but this time. I asked him if he wanted to do a little one-on-one, -on -one, and we played hoops. <laughs> played hoops with Patrick Ewing. Our life around here is so boring and terrible. You just see C. Everett Coop and Larry King. But when I dream, it's Fabio, Patrick Ewing. <laughs> I, I saw Fabio, and he said I could have been a model. How about yeah. that? How about that, Elise? <laughs> I'm going to grow played, my hair long like Fabio does. And I played one-on-one -on -one with Patrick Ewing, and I won every time. <laughs> I took it to the hoop. <laughs> I saw Fabio in my dream again, and he said, I can't believe it's not butter. And I said, I can't believe it's Fabio. <laughs> <laughs> but where's my fucking book? Where's my autograph book? God damn it. I, uh, but uh, the headless kid was there, too. He was a bit of a drag. <laughs> <laughs> sweet, sweet boy, but it, oh, it brings you down. Real mood killer. Also put around the scene is Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, apparently, yeah, he's, he's like a, a blind guy that's his voice is dubbed. I'm like, yeah. you're du Blatty, you're dubbing Sam Jackson's fucking voice, dude. <laughs> what are you? I mean, I think right there that decision is like, oh. Yeah, this guy shouldn't have been directing movies. Oh, my God. Remember him coming to America? He held up the goddamn store. He was shot in Goodfellas. <laughs> I I know the answer to this is no, but I have to ask. Anyway, has anybody read uh, William Friedkin's uh, autobiography? No, uh, no. The, Fried, the Friedkin <laughs> connection. It's no. it's it's really good. But the the it opens with him being like, it's an incredible way to open your book. He's just like. I had a chance to uh, have the first Prince songs on a movie of mine. I said no. I had uh, Basquiat <laughs> paintings offered to me for free that I could have had. I said no. And he just goes through this list of all these things <laughs> he could have made millions and uh -huh. millions of dollars off of and just fucked it up. And I think that <laughs> girl once really liked me and I could have got somewhere, but I didn't. And that's, another that's, thing that happened that's to me That's chapter that I didn't two, like. Eric. That's chapter two. <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, oh, Thomas, I'm so sorry. Holy shit, it's Mr. Shed, you're a love daddy. Holy fuck. Get my autograph <laughs> book. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Tell, it, tell Brooklyn it's hot out. Come on, do it. <laughs> do it. Tell me it's hot out. Ah, uh, Mookie. You see Mookie walking running on you. Come on, say it. Say it. <laughs> oh, I love having all the stars are out tonight. <laughs> Uh, Why does he sound so different? <laughs> Shit. Is 
Bill not around here? <laughs> oh, man. I'd love to say hi. <laughs> Dude, if any actor should have been cast in a movie like this, it's Bill None. Mm. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But we should say Patrick Ewing is the angel of death. Uh, yes. Playing sir. cards or doing tarot with um, the priest, uh, with, with Father Dyer there. Father Dyer also at this point. Uh, it, it has has the Frankenstein head reattachment thing, but we don't know he's dead yet. So yes. it's like that weird but thing that you have. This we, line he has of like, well, you know, Bill, like I'm I'm not dreaming. This is not a dream for me. And then then we cut to him like dying in the hospital. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah yes. I mean, so we should say because it is another fucking hilarious George C. Scott moment. But before the dream sequence and before he cracks the whole fingerprint thing on the confessional. There is a scene where he does go to the hospital to visit Father Dyer, and we we don't see Father Dyer like get hospitalized. Like George C. Scott just goes to visit him, and so they're right. in there talking or whatever. And this is where he's like, you know, he's telling him about like you got to take care of your health. You know, he's mm -hmm. like, well, my brother Eddie, blah blah blah, and he's like, yeah, Eddie dropped dead at thirty. Will you shut up about Eddie? <laughs> yeah, and, you know, this scene of him going to the hospital to visit that guy, it. Again, this movie, like with the cameos, it's just constantly undercutting itself to me by throwing in shit like may the Schwartz be with you yes. uh, Father Dyer says to yeah. one of these nurses and now we're just quoting space balls right I now. Like, well, he's a movie head Eric. He that's loves the thing the movie. is I kind of like that. I like uh, I like yeah. that that's a part of his character that yes. like you don't like that is a lame thing that people do all the time. It's very relatable to me that he would do something like that. Uh, sure, sure, I, sure. I like but the I don't, I, I, it, it doesn't work for me because now I'm just thinking about Mel Brooks and Fabio like oh, sure. and then, I, then you, then you want to <laughs> reel me back into like being afraid of the devil I don't think so. Sure. <laughs> uh, there is a great thing. And I think it kind of like it, it's a line that if you weren't told like that they were friends, it would seem like really mean because like this old man is in the hospital. But like George C. Scott comes in with like a like a little penguin stuffed animal. And he's like, uh, Dyer says like something. Like, oh, who you got there? He's like, oh, yeah, I brought this for you. I found it in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't clean it. Just smell it. Yeah, smell it's just it. this nice like ball busting. Like, yeah, I got this for you because you're in the hospital. I found it in the trash. Yeah, you know, that is that, I like those moments for sure. He's got this weird jag where he keeps on telling it. Uh, Mother India is calling to you, Father. You should go to like. Did he just read like the National Geographic or something? Like, what the fuck? He's like obsessed <laughs> with him going to India for some reason. You know what you should do, Father, is die in Southeast Asia. <laughs> <laughs> Best place to do it is everything all right in here, guys? <laughs> we're fine. Oh, the we're fine is so fucking good. Because so this is why it's one of my favorite Jersey's got performances. Because uh, Steve, as you pointed out. Yeah, a lot of it is him just like, oh, my God, uh, my faith in me. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Carp, carp. <laughs> but, but what's fascinating is like just these little explosive brief firecracker moments like that where yes. it's like, yeah, he's yelling, but it's real quick. Like, we're fine. Just really yelling that like it because you don't know when it's going to come. Yeah, because, yeah. It, you know, in that scene, he's just responding to this nurse who's like, hey, guys, you're fucking yelling in here. Like, is everything all right? And instead of like, I'm sorry, we'll keep it down. We realize this is a hospital. It's like, nope, screaming there also. <laughs> well, well, that's the I genius of this performance is that it starts off at a murmur. And then as it goes on, the grumbles and the the snorts and the like just sighs of anger turn into full-blown uh, runs of screams, which yeah, is what yes. you want from a Scott performance, really. Yeah, yeah, you, very it's, true. It's a symphony, dude. Uh, so oh, yeah, he wakes beautiful. up. He wakes up and he's had the dream uh, with Patrick Ewing and he's like, oh my God. No, he's had the dream where his <laughs> friend is dead and then whoops a doodle, his friend has actually been murdered by whatever the Gemini killer slash Legion is and all of his blood. And this is, you know, we, we're seeing the room. This one I don't mind again. It's, it's, we're seeing the room. It's, you know, the body's under a thing. All of his blood is in little jars. You know, that's Oof, fun. Drained into cups on this table and the. Uh, the forensics person is like, and not a drop of it was spilled. Yeah, and yeah. he says something about like, yeah, I've seen nothing. Like, what's interesting here, and yeah, again, it, I get it. It's very authorly, you know, like they because all all of this is done mostly through dialogue. Like, oh, I've seen, seen nothing like this in twenty years yeah. and all that shit. But where this gets cinematic, and again, it's just because George C. Scott carrying this entire movie on his aggrieved back. Uh, you know, 
is doing such a good job right here at like picking up the blanket, looking at his fucking yes. dead friend who's been horribly mutilated. And like you, so your brain makes that connection of like, I haven't seen like this in 20 years on the job, says the forensics dude. And then here's George C. Scott, you know, withered hard apple lieutenant. And that dude's going to fucking puke. You know what yes, I mean? Yeah. So like all in Scott's face, you totally get all the shit of like, okay, whatever happened to this guy? Like, yeah, we're not seeing it here. And in another movie, you would, and that would also be fine for that movie. But it's like, it still works. Yeah, you for know, sure. it's, oh, for just, sure. it's just not a bloodbath. And then you get the cool, it's a wonderful life creepiness thing. And that, that is eerie. Like, you know, like it's. Oh, yeah. The, it, it, we haven't spilled any of the blood except for was what was written on the wall. And he's like, what do you mean the wall? And they pull this fucking blanket down. And yeah, it's a wonderful life. Dripping in blood. Oof. It's Oof. fucking right. great. That, well, that's just missing the whole point of the movie right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, doing that with this, that just doesn't make any sense. So clearly, they don't understand what Capra is going for. I misread the picture. <laughs> hey, Gemini Killer, even watch the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very skeptical, but not cynical. Uh, well, we're so sorry. It's only but what's written on the wall. <laughs> he rips up it up. What the fuck is Pizza the Hut? What does that mean? <laughs> pizza the Hut's gonna gonna call out for you. What? <laughs> I'll just put, take this down here. What does it say? Barf. <laughs> I didn't see that one. Now what? What? What is it? G give me a, a, a quick log line. What is it? You know, I was, uh, was a fan of Exorcist Three, except for that weird part where a nurse has to explain the plot of Spaceballs and George C. Scott. <laughs> Ludicrous speed? How can you go, Ludicrous speed? And you're I don't understand this. You're telling me Pizza of the Hut's red end guy is a robot gangster who's then at one point <laughs> eating him, saying, You're delicious? I, 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 just, I gotta write this. I gotta write this. I gotta write this. I gotta rent it tonight. Great. <laughs> Sounds very erratic. Spaceballs the movie. Okay, now what is happening now is happening now. <laughs> uh,. So uh, this, yeah, this whole thing happens. They get out of the thing. Uh, Stanley Ipkiss's landlord the, is the nurse. <laughs> Woo uh, oh, I did yeah. not spot her, but thank you for that. Now it's yeah. all coming clear. <laughs> uh, and then we meet uh, Scott Wilson, the, uh, oh. the the head doctor. Hell who is yeah, like, Dr. Temple. Who is like a fanboy kind of of, of uh, um, uh, this character, Kinderman. Yes. Like he, he kind of is always like, Oh, I gotta get ready for the big detective. Big detective's coming in today. Gotta <laughs> maybe do my do my thing in front of the mirror. Maybe he'll ask me to the movies tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. He's, movie he's buddy, a new movie buddy. I do, I do love this Scott Wilson performance. It's so weird. Well, apparently he's being uh, manipulated by yes. the Gemini killer, uh, and that's why he has this great scene. Because like, the first scene is just like, oh, this is the hospital, blah blah, blah all these catatonics, this that, the other thing, uh, and you know, you see the ward and stuff, and then like. He introduces, he takes him down the ward where the Gemini killer or patient X is. The disturbed and, ward, by yes. the way. It's not as bad as disturbing behavior, which, by the way, came out nine years later, but it is very cuckoo's and ass this whole thing. It is what, yeah. first of all, you just made my head nearly explode. Yes off of my neck, Steve, by saying that this movie came out just nine years before Disturbing Behavior <laughs> because they could not feel fucking galaxies farther apart. Than yes, they oh, for sure. Do. And it's not even a decade, man. Wow, the magic of movies. Uh, <laughs> but so he uh but then like, you know, uh later in the movie, which I love, he's like talking he has to like try to like uh get Kinderman into meet patient X. So he's just sort of like has this little script out where it's like you know, it's a patient you looked in on, the one you were looking in on the other day. No, no, no that's all right. It's the patient you looked in on was look, asking. No, you, you, the patient you looked in on. It's just like, it's great. <laughs> the patient you looked in on. Yeah, God. You fucking, you came in too late there. You came in too late there. <laughs> start, from, start from the beginning. Start from, hit the beginning. Hit the beginning. Come on. <laughs> And he's it like, is so funny because he's doing that. And then George C. Scott comes in. He's like, what? What, what is this? What's this? And he sits down and he's like reading off cue cards. It's a Dude, great little scene. He's got the speech like sitting in an open <laughs> desk drawer, like outside of George C. Scott's like field of vision. And he's like going through all the lines. And when we get to the part of the monologue where like he has stopped rehearsing in front of us, the audience, <laughs> he's like, uh, and you see him look <laughs> down into the drawer. <laughs> So oh good. man, I love it. There is a cool moment when they go into the disturbed ward where it, you know that guy Ooh, you looked in on. Yeah. <laughs> um 
he walks by one of the doors and you hear um Jason uh, Miller. Uh, Jason Miller, yes, yes. Thank you. I couldn't think of his name. You Jason Miller uh just go, Bill. You just ben. hear his voice. Ben this, is Bill, isn't it? No, I just I was because Star Wars. Ben uh, oh, Ben. Ben. <laughs> ben. Yeah. <laughs> Bill. And then you, what's cool is you get uh, camera goes inside that cell, right? And you hear George C. Scott sort of talking. I think Grandel Bush comes up right here. Yes. And you don't hear what they're saying, and they walk away. And then the camera stays in the cell, and it just goes in front of Jason Miller and just says, I was only 21 when I died. Yeah. And then <laughs> cuts. Fucking awesome. We also meet uh, uh, Celilia, Mrs. Celilia or something like that. She, she, the lady with the radio repair. Oh, oh Clelia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clelia. Mrs. Yeah, Clelia. Yeah. What, uh, the, the pies and the anchovies. Like, this is a actually <laughs> pretty good, I thought, pretty good, like, eerie, like, woman who's lost her mind performance. Like, yeah. they don't go yeah. over the top, but, like, they set up that this character will come back and has some importance and yeah. like and and it's not like too plot driven they actually like kind of have a character here which I, I enjoyed and he's talking to her because uh the the nurse uh stand up kisses landlord tells her uh, tells Jersey Scott rather that at the time of the murder uh this lady was seen in the vicinity yes yada 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 so he's like trying to see if you know, she saw anything. He's like, did you touch those jars? Did you touch those jars? Do you remember coming in here and touching those jars? <laughs> a lot of his lines of questioning in this movie I find very funny because a lot of it's just like whenever anyone mentions anything, he's like, who? What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. And what was that? And who was the, that? Uh, <laughs> and something, something, Ken, the great Ken Lerner uh, gets involved here and it's like, I'm sick and tired of this guy running up down by hospital. They have the scene. Oh, this is great. This oh, is this a guy getting mad scene. Yeah. Now, who? Well, hang on a second, Steve. What's this guy from? Because you're saying Ken Lerner. Like, I might know him. I believe he's what you would call the other Lerner's brother. Michael Lerner, his brother. Yes. He's also. Oh, he's brothers with Mayor Ebert? Yeah, he is. Mayor and he's... <laughs> uh, he's the first principal on the Buffy the Vampire Slayer show. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's also the running man. He's in stuff. Uh, but. Great, great little character actor here, but he's he's given he's given George C. Scott the business. George C. Scott says something that is so incongruous with the first Exorcist. He's like, "Oh, you're D- David Karras, uh, my best friend. I loved him so much." I'm like, "You met him three times in that movie." Like, <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't even. He kept talking to him like, "I'd like to go to the movies with you." Yeah, you but know, they I never did. go to the movies. Well, I looked in his eyes and I fell in love, and we. We were reading the trades when Spaceballs was being made, and we were so excited. I, I never got over it. I'll be honest with you. Him dying, it destroyed my life. Right when I, I just, shook his hand, I said, you know, they got Bill Pullman's going to be in that movie. <laughs> I just, When he says best friend, I just got that Larry David, best friend. Like, best you know, friend. It's just like they don't even know each other. Come on. I was like, I loved him like a brother. I was like, what? You did? <laughs> really All right. right. We're the only two guys who knew who Daphne Zuniga was. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we were very excited to see her work. Eric and Chris. So in this timeline, we're prospecting. Yes, in 1973. It's a, 70, it's a 70s, 70s movie. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, no. It's, but it's, it comes out before Star Wars. So Star Wars is actually <laughs> yeah, yeah. referencing space balls. I like this about. idea. Yeah. yeah you got to read the trades. You know? oh God, it's the all the trades. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Decades in advance. This sounds really good. I'm going to. Okay. I'll just change Princess Vest. Uh, into Princess Leia. Oh my God, it's coming together. Oh, there it is. Schwartz sounds a lot like Force to me. Yeah. Uh, what if I take, <laughs> okay, Pizza the Hut? What if uh, Jabba? Maybe I'll <laughs> call him Jabba. I was just going to rip off a Kira Kurosawa, but I can just rip <laughs> off this. It's a lot easier. Oh, we're one to one right here. <laughs> the uh, whole George C. Scott freak out oh, here. Oh, yes. Because, yeah, this the guy, the reason why the doctor is so upset is because George C. Scott has all these cops swarming the place, obviously, because there's been a fucking murder. Mm-hmm. And the guy is like, you know, you're upsetting all the patients, this, that, and the other thing. And he's tr- George C. Scott is trying to explain to this guy, like, what's going on. And everyone's fighting. And he just goes, Watch you shut your mouth <laughs> shut? Your mouth screaming at this guy. And then amazing, like watching yeah. a wave crest in the ocean, right? He comes back down and he's just like, oh, excuse me. Oh, oh, excuse me. And he like has to take out a <laughs> handkerchief and he's like batting off like beads of sweat as far as, oh, I'm sorry for screaming. I, 
Oh, that's t- like he really he realizes how fucking terribly well, also, embarrassing he, this all is. It's even more impressive because he also cries at the end of it. Because he yes. goes, yep. Well, you got the fuck up! And he's like, <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's like the, the ability to go from. <laughs> 10 to 0 is just really something right. to watch. Yeah. I sh- I need to calm down. Let's, uh, all right. Let's talk about body mutilation. So it was actually <laughs> this severed uh, middle finger. Not dis- it, it wasn't that. It was actually a pointer finger that was severed. And yeah. actually, the sign of the Gemini killer was on the chest, not on the back. Oh, God. That makes me feel good. Oh, yes, talking that, about death like that feels good. Relaying some important information, Chris Cavan, exactly, is that he says... To the the doctor here, he's like, here's the deal, dude. Back when we were doing this Gemini killer case, we fed the press a bunch of phony baloney shit about the M.O. of the killer. So that way we could root out all the crazies calling in. We would say like, oh, where did you carve the sign of the Gemini? You know, and he, oh, they'd say the back, but it was actually the hand. They cut off this finger, but it was actually this other finger on this hand. So that's how we weeded out all the crazy people. And nobody knew what was, you know, actually going on. And that's why Jersey Scott is so convinced there's something wacky yeah. afoot here is because the people that have been the little boy that was killed and all these other murders that have happened are all the actual mo that was not public information i, I like this scene i like the you know going through the whole like how the police misdirected the press in order to weed people yeah. out i it, it, this is a this is an interesting uh, part of the film yeah but then also a weird like kink in all of this for the gemini killer only murdering dudes with the first or middle name of Kevin? Yeah, <laughs> or K. Yeah. It has to start with a K. Oh, is it, oh, is it just K? Yeah. Oh, that's right. And he's like, oh, cut. God, dear. You know, good thing my name doesn't have a what? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. Look out. <laughs> my name's got a, it starts with a K. You're right. And when, yeah, he's like, because uh, someone's like, oh, well, Father Dyer's middle name was whatever. And he goes, Father Dyer's middle name was Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> the way he says Kevin when so His mother funny. named him that. She sentenced him to death. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he would. He had a uh, he had an AMC Stubbs account under Kevin. Uh, <laughs> it's just and, a- uh, she had a Fandango account under Joseph, his first name. He wanted to keep them separate. It That's is how a- I know his middle name is his Stubbs account was under Kevin. <laughs> it's just <laughs> such a weird mo. Like, yeah, only people with K names. Yeah, I knew. I told him I was gonna. Bite him in the ass, right? One time Dyer was coming back from a traveling and he was at the airport. Now you saw a guy with a sign that said Mr. Kevin. And he was like, you know what I mean? Funny, I'm gonna take that guy's car. <laughs> Don't even get me started on movie pass, okay? Don't get me fucking started on movie pass. The dream is dead. <laughs> Give up already! What, what do you mean I can't use this for a Fandango event? <laughs> a Fathom event, rather. I'm, I'm an old right. man. I get that confused. I, I wanted to see the New York Metropolitan Opera. I was uh, planning to see it in the big screen. Uh, this was this anniversary Spaceballs, one night only? <laughs> I can't use my movie pass? <laughs> what do you mean you took away unlimited movies? That was the whole fucking point! <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go uh, see Riff Tracks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love, uh, uh, I love that. Uh, no, so whatever, <laughs> and like it kind of keeps going on. And there, the one part of this movie which is I'm not gonna blame Blatty for because he's against it is the actual exorcism bit, uh, which is yeah. this other priest, Father Morning, who has like three and a half lines uh, play, oh. played by Nicole Williamson, who oh, yeah. uh, previous previous episode, he's played Cagliostro in Spawn. Oh, and yeah. uh, his also last, is, his last uh, performance. He's also this Excalibur as Merlin, you know, Ooh. Ex- British actor Excalibur, guy. Excalibur, great movie. Never saw yes, it. Got to do you it. You should check it out. Good it's one. a lot of fun. Uh, but so he's like, uh, what, what do you call it? Georgie Scott is meeting with a different priest talking about exorcisms. And it's like, oh, there's this other guy, Father Morning, uh, who, you know, he did an exorcism in Brazil or something and his hair went white. And it's like, yes. okay, that's kind of something. And then there's this other scene where it's just him in his room and that evil wind comes in and he's like, hmm. And it's like, what <laughs> are we talking about? Not today, Pazuzu. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, because like what they're trying to do here, I mean, even with the white hair, give me a fucking break. But like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're trying to do this like, you know, in in the incredible five star way that Father Marin is mysteriously introduced into this movie. Yes. You know, into the first movie. What they're trying to do in this movie is a sort of a similar thing and just keep this dude 
on the edges yes. of the field until he's going to come into play. And boy, I, as much as I like this movie, this motherfucker does not work at all. And it is a bad move to have this well, shit in here. The studio really crammed it in. Apparently, yeah. Chris's delicious director's cut doesn't have him in it. Is that how that works? I think so. I I I I, I specifically watched the theatrical yeah. this okay, time yeah. oh, because okay. I wanted to see it. But I, I remember it just works closer. To, although I will say that the, the uh, morning death is pretty good. It's good. It's it's Hellraiser. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, but so he so but that's he's just kind of around. Just all just to put that yeah. out there as things are happening. Uh, the next thing I guess is the nurse murder, which is pretty cool. Right? Oh yeah. Um oh yeah yeah yeah. Which uh which, which mercer- is- ner- Oh the big the famous jump scare one? Yes, yeah. Yeah, where I like where that. It's, where it's like basically like it's her it's like a really long shot of her like just at the at the desk with a nice red sweater on so we were keeping our eye on her and she's like kind of coming after, back. You know? This is after she gets yelled at by a doctor for waking him up. <laughs> oh oh yeah. yes. Which is another well, jump, jump scare. scare. Yeah, yeah it is. Oh, okay, scare, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. also kind of a jump scare when the uh the clippers come out, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's also true. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I do like that. What are you waking me up for? I thought, is that a doctor? I thought that was a patient. I think it's a doctor it's sleeping a doctor. Like between S- rounds, and he's like, "What's oh, your okay. name? I'm going to write you up or whatever." And then, yeah. And yeah, and then she's walking back to the desk, and we get the big like the the, the music swells, and that you see the uh, the clipper thing come. And don't worry, folks. You know, you're not going to see a drop of blood in this movie. Besides, it's already drained. This, this is. It, I, I just can't get over that you don't see the kills in this movie. It's yeah, not. It's, it's weird. She, she, um, she, you know, it's a cool. It is a good jump scare. Like the, the big uh, thing. You know, he comes after. Her, it's a big jump scare, and then you know that she's dead. And this is like, again where it gets to the. That I don't mind. I don't even mind not seeing the beheading, but then it's like, and then, man, and then the rosaries were inserted inside of her, and then Bible pages were in her nose, and it's like, I don't know, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's crazy the way this is all, like, explained or whatever, because it's like, yeah, we're told she was slit down the middle, organs removed, she was stuffed with other materials and sewn back up, and George C. Scott goes, other materials, and then they're like, uh... Yeah, rosaries. Just a bunch of <laughs> rosaries. Just, Rose. just, just rosaries, no Lincoln logs or anything like that. Or... <laughs> rosaries, asbestos, newspaper. Damn, they really did a number on this lady. <laughs> She's in a pose like, you know, See, a little fox that someone stuffed or something. And that's the thing about the movie. It keeps on telling me heinous stuff without ever showing me heinous stuff. And I'm just like, shrug. That's I mean, me. That's, um, that's me. That's, I mean, I understand that, like, uh, he, I, I, I don't mind the bank shots he's making, though. Like, to yeah. see the, the, the guy come out of nowhere with the shears is, like, eerie. No, and, it is. It is. To yeah. me, where, like, I'm like, I don't need the double tap of also seeing this lady being opened up. Like, well, uh, unless it's an Argento a, movie or a Fulci. Just a little bit. Just, <laughs> just a little just bit. A slight okay. Bit. That, that's a fair point. This is when he um, starts to meet with. Um, Brad, the great Brad Dourif, and yeah, like, I, it, I, it doesn't matter. We're we're flipping around here yeah. a little bit. This happens before oh, that okay. because when he's when he's telling Grandel Bush about like Father Karras was my best friend, and I saw him go out that window, and I'm pretty sure the man in that room is Damien Karras, and like, uh, just talking about like the file on this person because he we're told by the way from uh, uh, Scott whatever who uh, the Walking Dead doctor Scott oh, Scott Wilson yeah. Scott Wilson. Wilson sorry yeah you know when he gives that whole speech one of the things he says is like you know he had amnesia we didn't know who he was or whatever and he's like I want the file on that man get it now and he asked the nurse the old crotchety nurse about something and she was like well that would be in the file and it's again it's another oh, yes. it it is not in the file it is not <laughs> which is so great but so yes this is it's the fucking I think Brad Dourif is incredible. Oh, he in this is. Movie. He is. Yes. He, he, yeah. I think he is far and away the best part of this movie. But then it's just, I mean, and he's great at it and he does it really well, but it's just monologue, 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 monologue. Yes. I, I yeah. mean, yeah, I, 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 I don't, I, it works for me, for, especially like, and the way that they're doing it. So the way it is essentially is George C. Scott is seeing Damien Karras. Uh, yeah, seeing, oh, uh, what, I forget the actor. The actor name. Jason Miller. Jason yeah. Miller, and you see Jason Miller occasionally as like an old haggard man, just not talking. 
But when he's talking, when the, the character is talking, it's Brad Dourif, who is James Vanimer, who yes, uh, the, the Gemini, Gemini killer. the original Gemini killer, who they found and they found this guy wandering down near the canal 15 years ago. And uh, Gemini killer, who is he? He's possessed. He's possessed Damien Karras for the devil. Yes. As a job, right? He's yeah. like, yeah. I, I'm doing this for my boss. <laughs> at the moment of his death, you know what I mean? Like Gemini Killer gets executed, and this is one of the things about the movie that I think doesn't exactly work is that it's so. And to Eric's point, monologue, 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 is this concept is it's good and it's interesting, but it's so out there. Yeah, you, it takes a while to explain and takes a while to really drill home exactly what happened and why and again and he, he has yeah. to tell you exactly what it is you know and this is a fucking thing that warner brothers beefed the whole thing on or this is fox rather excuse me um because the original cut which i i do want to get the blu-ray and track it down i know that it's very it's it. unprofessional of me to have not purchased the blu-ray to tell you about <laughs> oh man you are um, gonna get nailed to the cross ha 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 oh um but the director's cut supposedly starts with uh you were seeing karis like at the moment of death and it's like he's pronounced yeah. dead and then he wake he wakes back up, and that it's like oh he's alive somehow. What's going on there? And it starts starts that mystery. And instead, yes. it's all on Duriff to be like, yeah, my master, who is I believe referring to Pazuzu, the demon from the first movie, like was pissed off about the exorcism. You know, it was pissed off at Father Marin. I was executed at the exact same time. All this shit happened. And Pazuzu is like, hey, man, you want another chance to keep your reign of terror as the Gemini killer alive? Go, I'll put your soul into this body and then he'll, you know, be alive again and you can continue your your mad reign or whatever. Yeah. But then it's just all this shit about like, and then I had brain damage for a little bit. So I had to <laughs> sit around until my brain repaired itself. And I was like, now you're getting too into the weeds. Yeah. Yeah. Just exactly. tell me but, like, that yeah. the soul got put into this body. That's it. I don't need to hear about the fucking physical therapy. I wish it was as specific as you're saying with the Bazuzu stuff. But instead, you know, they're, they're keeping it kind of vague. He was like brought back to settle the score. Uh, by, by who? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, the master. And uh, who is that? And, uh, you, you got an address for this master okay. or what? I'm going to ask you the who, what, when, and why. <laughs> Quick question. Uh, uh, did, did the master have any, of the Senate? Did, did he have any uh, uh, identifiable features, like a tattoo, maybe, or an uh, eye patch? <laughs> <laughs> and then Brad Durf said, you know, I love Shakespeare. And he's like, oh, yeah, which, uh, which play is that? Oh, Titus Andronicus. Oh, oh okay. Uh, you like any other? Do you, have you ever seen a carp in a bathtub? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I they think do that's like, in a Shakespeare play is a carp in the bathtub. <laughs> Apparently also the original cut do doesn't have Jason Miller in it at all because he was unavailable. Yeah. And then this, I, I actually do like the cutting back and forth uh, between the two of them because that, yeah. that's the only yeah. way it kind of really sells the eeriness of it, of like he's trapped in this, yeah, uh, in the, it, by this well, demon thing. And apparently, this is Brad Dourif speaking at a school. Oh, um, yeah, who knows? I, yeah, yeah is, go ahead. Uh, Jason Miller, by the way. Hey, FYI, Jackie Gleason's son, uh, in Ooh. case you're wondering. Jason and, Patrick's father? Exactly. My uh, God. They're uh, everywhere. The <laughs> Eric's going to get furious now. No, not uh, in a, in a, <laughs> Jason Miller apparently was so deep into being an alcoholic, he has what Brad Dourif describes on a DVD commentary Ooh. as <laughs> wet brain. And he goes... Oh. <laughs> He couldn't uh, remember any monologues. He couldn't remember any any of this stuff. So, like, basically, when you watch him, you, he only gives, like, one or two little lines here and there as opposed to Brett Dourif yeah. is doing all the monologues and stuff. And it's like... Brad Dourif. Just Straight talking. shooter. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. Shooter. tell you what it's just, like. I'll tell you what it's like. By the way, I sent you guys this before we went on the air, but I think it's funny enough or disturbing enough to, to mention here <laughs> because it was... This is kind of the focal point of what I'm about to talk about. The f and this is from Wikipedia, and we're reading from Wikipedia, just like a true crime podcast. You're going to love this sure. one. A reading from the book of Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> please the, please keep, yeah. keep it in Catholicism. Sure. <laughs> the film became a focal point of the serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> of course. Detectives of course it did. testify that Dahmer claimed to identify with the Gemini killer and would play the film for some of his victims before killing them. Uh, Don, Dahmer's final attempted victim, Tracy Edwards, testified that Dahmer would rock back and forth while chanting at various times, 
that he and that he especially enjoyed the sequence uh, the sequence with the possessed Carreras. Dahmer went on so far to purchase yellow contact lenses to resemble oh, Miller, as yep. well as emulate another film character he admired, <laughs> Emperor Palpatine from Return of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> See this. This proves yep. it. Fanboys are serial killers. That's, yes, that's yeah. it. Yeah. It's just it's a one to one here, folks. It's and so now funny. that that we have unearthed this new information about Jeffrey Dahmer coming to Peacock, twenty twenty three, a new six episode <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer series, talking all about movies that Jeffrey Dahmer liked. <laughs> Jeff, Man. Jeffrey Nam Jeffrey Dahmer nerd boy. <laughs> yeah. He liked Return of the Jedi, so I'll give him that. Um <laughs> <laughs> It, you know, and this is also this is kind of mirroring uh, the other week when we talked Halloween two, which also supposedly inspired a serial killer. So we're having That's fun right. on the spooktacular. We are That's having a lot right. of fun. Uh, there's, <laughs> I was actually went out to dinner. We, me and my wife and a friend of ours saw Moon Age Daydream, and this guy. I, I've not watched the Dahmer show yet. I probably will because I'm Dahmer head, as everybody knows. Mm. Um, <laughs> we're talking about the movie Moon Age Daydream. We're like, oh yeah, this Bowie song or that movement this waiter comes out of nowhere and i mean runs across this restaurant it wasn't a nice restaurant it was like a, a mid-tier restaurant runs across restaurants oh my god are you guys talking about the Dahmer show i'm like no <laughs> and he's like i am obsessed and i'm like yeah oh okay dude was he was he frantically taking out his yellow contact lenses when, <laughs> when he found out you were not talking about yeah. Dahmer? was you guys talking about Dahmer or what was that evan peterson was he doing uh, <laughs> no i was doing work for his next uh role I Steve, was, when, when he was talking to you, you start like one by one taking singles off the table. Like <laughs> you keep fucking talking, this tip's going right in the back of my wallet. And, no, uh, it was just chilling. Uh, that's don't, all. <laughs> don't ruin the Dahmer show for me. I don't know how it ends. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Duraf here. You we're doing some cool stuff where like the voice coming out of Duraf's mouth is not always Duraf here. Like he starts singing and it's like the voice of a little girl at one point. And probably the most fucked up part of like all of the, you know, monologuing that he's doing in this first scene here is he's talking about, he's like, Hey, Lieutenant, do you know that a decapitated head stays alive for 20 seconds after you cut it off? Well, you know what I would do? I'd cut off the head of my victim and then, hold it up and show them their body. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like Brad Dourif, man. He delivers. God damn. He delivers. He's he great in this. He really yeah. does. Uh, no, no, he's I mean, talking about, like, draining a person, too. And he's like, you're getting all the blood out. The overall effect is astonishing. Well, to Eric's point, it has worked. It, yeah, to Derek's point, this is a two-hander for the most part. Because that's what this movie kind of devol not devolves into, evolves into. It's like, it's just yeah. a lot of these scenes between the two of them. And it's great because George C. Scott and fucking Brad Dourif signed me up. But like, yeah. it it would have worked better almost as a play. I kind of agree with you. Yes, right? I I think yeah. I think I would be. I, I think I went to if I went to a, a theater and sat down and watched this, I probably would have been like amazing show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, actually, but we should adapt Legion into a stage play. Yeah. Mm, let's sure. do let's it. bring Broadway <laughs> back. <laughs> I understand. I totally get why Dahmer liked this guy, though, because he is a climber. He's a worker. Like he, you're, 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 you're Lord. Your boss tells you, "Look, I got this body, and it's I. You can do some great things in this body of this priest, but guess what? You have to work 15 years to get this brain working. It's going to be 15 <laughs> years of just working on this brain to get it back and work and repair. But if you do it, you right. could do great things for me. You could do fantastic things for me. You can make these." incredible deaths of bleeding and all this shit yeah. and like if that's if you're a serial killer that's your whole shit like right it's like i'm i'm creating my own corpus this is my uh, uh body of work i'm going to create so i can see it i can see well it. also like you know the gemini killer cutting heads off just like Dahmer like doing man so, yeah you know he definitely saw a lot of himself in there and what's great after all this shit, he's talking about how he does it. This, that, the other. George C. Scott just punches him in the face. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it's fucking great because he's walking out like in the hospital corridor there. And I, maybe it's Grandel Bush. He's talking to somebody. And you just hear this nurse go, his goddamn nose is broken. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's but the, the key piece of information here is that he just gets out of this whole thing. Uh, the phrase, save your servant, which was something uh, that was said at one point. And he goes and looks up with save your servant means and it's part of the i almost said the lines of dialogue but it's part of whatever you would read in the exorcism ritual yes which is cool um, and i mean like kind yeah. of, you know he's 
he does have this young fan. Like, so basically, as it's going on, like he, the the Gemini killer keeps telling uh, George C. Scott that he needs to tell the press that he is the Gemini killer, that the Gemini right. killer is back, or else he will be punished. That's kind of what is kind of hanging over the movie for a while. It, it, to, to be fair, he's trying. He's definitely trying to convince the police that of that. Yes. He's not going to tell the media that, but he's trying to tell anybody who will listen. The Gemini killer is back, and everybody's like, fuck you, he's dead. And, like, and that's so essentially it. Brad Dourif just constantly being like, don't forget to tell the paper that I'm back. <laughs> like, no, those are your last warning. Tell the press. Come on, man. <laughs> You're invited and to the no. dance. You're going to come to the <laughs> dance, baby. Mm-hmm. When when George C. Scott, is, uh, he finally gets that folder, you know, the file on the Gemini killer, and he's doing research in his little comfortable warm uh, snuggly yeah. kitchenette at home love this thing definitely smells like cigarettes you know it top to bottom uh he opens the folder and it's immediately a picture of the gemini killer and this is how the movie confirms to yes. you that brad duraf is the gemini it's like oh that's what the dude looked like that's the dude we just saw in the prison cell this guy is inside the body of damien Karras. <laughs> And his uh, uh yeah. his daughter uh shuffles in in a robe not uh much like um in the first R- one. Reagan, yeah. Reagan is wearing like I like these little nods. Like she yeah. just yeah. like you get the feet and it's like very slowly coming up, so you're like, Oh wait, is she possessed? Well, then, this yeah. is almost a cool, what do you call it there? Uh a jump scare homage. kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, and an homage too. I, I kind of wanted the jump scare to be the uh the carp honestly like something is like <laughs> yes smashing yes. in the house and it's like sure it's like, oh my god oh my god it's the devil it's the fucking devil and it's like oh no it's this, <laughs> this fucking fish in your bathtub that'd be great if you had a commentary for this movie and peter by it's like yeah we tried to get a carp and uh it, we couldn't find a big enough one all of them were pretty small you yeah. know every we tried to make the scene work but it just you know big fish hard to come by we we brought in a trout and fucking george c scott walked saying that's not a carp <laughs> he's he's very method. He's a very serious actor. He he needed it to be a carp, and we just we couldn't accommodate. We could never get the shot because he was supposed to take it out of the bathtub and bring it down <laughs> to the kitchen. But every time George would pick the live carp out of the bathtub, he would just naturally strangle it to death right there. <laughs> and we never got downstairs, so we just had to cut it. We went through thirty five <laughs> carp before we just said, "Scrap it. We're not doing this anymore. Let's make dinner." A lot of fucking fish fry on the menu for the set that <laughs> night, friend. Um, so somewhere around here, George C. Scott goes back to the mental hospital, uh, and Doctor Temple has committed suicide, like OD'd. Yes. Uh, and you're like, all right, well, you know, another See, good actor out of the movie. And this is another thing about the movie that I think kind of slows it down. It's just like we go to the hospital, and I'm going to leave it for a second. We're well, no, I'm back into the hospital. Yeah, we'll yeah. leave it for half a second. We're, we're back at the hospital. We're just leaving the hospital set up to set up more hospital. Like, just stay there or something. A lot yeah, of hospitals at this uh, spectacular. It honestly. is. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. A lot, a lot of creepy corridors uh, this month. Um, yeah. So it's it's again. Yeah, we leave the hospital. We come right back for again. Right back to Monologue Town with Brad Dora. Yes. And this, he's saying, you know, like. How Damien Karras is in, he's inside with us. He will never get away. His pain won't end. And he's like screaming and shit. Um, and oh, the weird thing in this, I never caught this line before, but Brad Dourif talking about like they had actually buried the body of Father Karras and Brad Dourif had to break out of the coffin. Yeah. Fucking like, and that, friends, is working for it right there. Yeah. You broke out of a coffin <laughs> and dug yourself up out of the ground because yeah. you were that dedicated of a serial killer. Absolutely, dude. Free pass. Well, I guess that's a hustler that. mindset. <laughs> I guess the idea is, you know, you uh you're open for what, two, three days to a possession? If they really want you mm-hmm. when you're dead, right. is that how that works? Yeah, I guess so. Like, it's just that's the window, you know, <laughs> three three business days. <laughs> I I love the idea, though, that like the, when he freaks out about uh, Karis and he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to rave like that. It is. Incre- this is like the this is the most believable Satan movie to me in a way, because like, yeah, after what Karis did, I if I was the devil, I'd be like, that motherfucker. Fucker, like just, <laughs> I would be after him for the rest of his life. I would just yeah, be like, yeah. I'm gonna kill your fucking friends. I'm gonna, kill, I'm gonna, Kaiser Stoze your entire fucking life, man. And <laughs> like, that's essentially what happens. He's just like, I will never stop. I'm going to kill everybody you know, you pieces of shit. 
oh, that son of a bitch priest. I want his mother dead. I want his father dead. I want his church burned to the ground. I want the I want the lady that um I want the lady who t- realized that the 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 dialogue was recorded backwards. That expert. I want her son crucified. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, it's a really long way to go, but we did that I, too. I, oh I, I, right, that's oh that's the poor little boy. That's why he's dead. Is because his mom found out the tape was reversed. <laughs> yes, it's like it seems like. All right, guys, let's let's now we're stretching. And it's like <laughs> it's at that point, you total, I totally bought you. Know, I I'm with you on that because at that point, I remember thinking to myself like, folks, not only have I seen the first movie, I've seen it multiple times. Uh-huh. Yes, I uh, I'm not. I don't need all the remember the first one. Like mm. that one was a fridge too far for me. Just have him kill that little kid, and it's a fucked up thing where the Gemini killer like killing little kids. Yeah, yeah. Well, I fucked mean, up. You know, like like I said, I I think the de- I, the one thing we all know about the devil is he he is a petty bitch, and he <laughs> will <true. laughs> will not let up on this stuff. He will he will be he will de- die rather than give this shit up. Um. Yeah. So you know, I I love right around here, Steve. You uh. You were cracking on this on Twitter. I loved it. It's uh, George C. Scott walking around the floor of the, the <sighs> ward again, and he's looking for that old lady that he questioned before. And oh, where is she? Crawling up on the ceiling, <laughs> freaky as fuck. <laughs> yes. Little Spider Man lady. Yeah, little Spider Lady. <laughs> she got bit. It's it's kind of amazing. Well, the weirdest part about this scene is like, because it's now, it's like, you know, I think George C. Scott is realizing, oh, this guy can, you know, you know, not only the movie Fallen can yes. come after my family as anyone, and he wants to come after my family. Uh oh, look out! And he's like looking for this old lady, and like she's the one that's crawling. But then some other nurse is the one that's gonna get, gonna do it. That mm-hmm. part like is a, a little too much of a shell game for me in terms of oh, dramatic. Dear God, I shouldn't have named my daughter Kendalina. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Kendalina! <laughs> ah, no, Kendalina, no. Uh, yeah, it's weird because we have met this other old lady. She's been like on the periphery here and there, kind of mumbling to herself throughout the movie, and you see her kind of snap out of the fog, and like she basically just murders this nurse, yes, unceremoniously, and leaves the hospital dressed as the nurse. Uh, to head down to George C. Scott's house here. Um, and there is a great uh, thing where, and, and this, I got to hear the other side of that phone call because George C. Scott's trying to call his house and he's getting the busy signal. Uh, and we see what's going on on the other end of the call. And it's the wife has picked up the phone and she's like, uh-huh, yeah, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> and what we're to believe is that uh, the nurse here, now possessed by the Gemini killer, has thrown its voice to sound like George C. Scott saying like, there's a nurse coming to the house to take care of the, the fucking mother-in-law or something like that. So someone's coming over. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But this fucking cop car chase scene where he is trying to get to this house and he's screaming at this guy driving the guy back up. You son of a, get out of here. (laughs) Dude, I would not want to be, this is not an Uber. I want as George C. Scott comes into my car. You go the wrong fucking way. I can't believe it. Give all those guys five stars and a 20% tip. My average star rating is 1.3. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, uh, the the passenger smelled. He apparently hadn't bathed in days. <laughs> he was loud and rude. Kept on screaming about a carp. <laughs> uh, something about a fish in his bathtub. Re- Didn't really understand. Refused it. to wear a mask. What else? <laughs> He also ate and drank in my car, which I do not appreciate. I got to tell you. I, I, Yelling I about seeing up. anti-Semites everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so like they got Karis uh, hooked up to like this brain monitor. Uh, the crazy lady arrives at the house. And this is fucking hilarious, though. It's like the uh, I think it's the uh, is it the wife or the mother in law here is like, what kind of a nurse is this? Yes. <laughs> it's like disgusting at this lady. Because well, apparently she comes to the house and just passes out. We don't see this. She just nope. comes to the house and passes out. Now like she is resting at the table. Meanwhile, Father Morning, if you can remember that guy, is yeah. has <laughs> finally showed up to the movie after one and a half scenes and no dialogue. And he's going to do some exorcism of his own. 
Yes. Well, this is why I get fucking ripped up. This is how we can call it the exorcist, right? Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, he didn't want you again. Blatty didn't want to call it the exorcist. He just wanted to call it Legion because that's not because he, there was yeah. no exorcism in this movie. But the studio is like, ah, uh, you're going to want an exorcism in there. Mm-hmm. You know, he, <laughs> his, yeah, I haven't seen the director's cut, obviously, but um, what, whatever he was going for is probably better than what happened here. Yes, oh, exactly. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and which so is he, almost al- always the case when a studio fucks with your movie. Yeah, by the way. yeah. Yes, he winds up. So Father Morning comes in. He starts doing the exorcism. Uh, we do get some more Jason Miller here, kind of back and forth between the two. And yeah, he just he telekinesis this old priest to the fucking ceiling, and his skin starts to pull off. Pour off. That's pretty cool. Yeah, was no, because he, he's like, yeah, he's like stuck to the wall, and yeah. when he tries to get off it, like his fucking cheek and ears just peeling off. Oof. Yeah, it's gross. no, it's it's, it's, it's actually awesome. gross. I mean, it's, they like rip, like his head like rips apart at one point. It's it's gnarly. It's very it's, it's hellraisery. Yeah, it's yeah. very yeah. hellraisery, and like you know, you think about the exorcism multiple sequences. You know, in the first movie, of course, they're they're totally unbeatable. I mean, the gore here is really great, but what's funny is like everything leading up to you know being telekinetically thrown against the wall is kind of hilarious because he says, you know, Karis uh, or you know Gemini Killer or whatever is like you again, and the uh, morning is like enter night. This time you're going to lose. He throws holy water on him, which is fine. That's your standard exorcism. So you fair, should be doing, of course. Absolutely. The camera then punches out to this two shot of them on opposite sides of the room. And in the middle, there's just like a bunch of snakes and flames <laughs> yep. kind of uh-huh. hanging out. Yeah. So that's a big LOL. And then this dude, he goes back Father Morning to read, you know, the next part of the exorcism ritual from the book. And his Bible just explodes in his face. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like That's fucking Rip happen. Taylor with the fucking, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> glitter everywhere. Because it's just like, it explodes into like fun confetti and shit. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so fucking funny. One of the drops when, so they got, he's got morning up on the on the ceiling. He's dancing on the ceiling there. Uh, <laughs> and like he drops him at one point. And I swear to God, this, uh, the, the stunt man who did this, he looks exactly like Boris Johnson. He's got stupid <laughs> hair. He's he's noticeably like thirty to forty pounds heavier, uh, and it, it was amazing. <laughs> the, the the hair just goes all the way out after that. <laughs> I for love a seat it. back guy. The fucking snakes, though, man. It's like an <laughs> SNL sketch. I gotta, they're just these little cheap puppet snakes. Like, hey, how's it going? There's like twelve of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah is this doing anything for you, the devil? <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey uh, Dobbers just uh, watching like, maybe next time I'll do something with snakes. Who knows? Maybe, maybe next time I'll try some snakes. I don't know. It's, sad. it's a sad turn of events, right, Chris? He never got the chance to try more. No. Yeah. There was ambitions. I mean, like, that's truly, that's the problem with the Gemini Killer and Jeffrey Dahmers. They had all these ambitions that never got really, you know, they never, they oh, never yeah. came to a fruition. Life doesn't usually turn out the way we expect it. You, know, you guys talking about Jeffrey Dahmer? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> no, we're talking about David Bowie. Thank you. Both iconic lasts, honestly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Grip the Legendary figure. <laughs> uh, but so, like, this is happening. So, yeah, Shorty Scott finally gets in. And it's this kind of cool scene where, you know, the nurse is just, like, getting back to her, whatever, her, her consciousness. He's like, ah. What are you doing here? And then she's like, I was waiting for you, evil way. And she pulls out the shears and almost cuts this girl's head off. This is wow, funny it's and dumb. Wild. The way this, like, it, the it's, yoink. Yes, it's, the a, yoink it's a big old is yoink. It's so weird. It, I don't know what this effect is. Like, they, it turns into, like, stop motion yeah, for a second. It looks like they, like, slowed down or tampered with the film stock afterwards to make it different. I don't know. It just seems yeah. it, unnatural. Very strange. Yeah. Like, there's a way that you can do that where it's like, oh, my God, she was almost decapitated. Yes. And George C. Scott pushed this, you know, nurse out of the way. Like, you could totally do. So I don't know if, like, they couldn't get the choreography down or what, but <laughs> this effect is very stupid. Yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> it just, it just, it, it kind of futzes with what should be the climax, a climax of the movie. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, again, in true Exorcist 3 fashion, George C. Scott has been out of the mental ward for three minutes, so he's got to get his buns back there to finish the movie. Yeah. And, you know, he gets back there, and um, 
you know, this is now George C. Scott gets stuck up against the wall yes. and they're arguing or whatever. And, you know, he's like, believe in me, believe in me. And then this is, I, I yeah. got to do the whole thing. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's like, his turn for a monologue, everyone. It is. It totally. And this is like, you're watching this fucking two hander, man. And you're like, oh, now he's cranking up. He's like, yeah. oh, I believe, I believe in anger and pain. I believe in cruelty and infidelity. <laughs> I believe in slime and stink and that every crawling, putrid thing, every possible ugliness and corruption. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I believe in you. Oh. <laughs> and he curses so much that he opens up heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it's like lightning it's really, strikes. Truly incredible. He the, all of a sudden lightning starts coming into this cell, like one after the other after the other, breaking through to what you would think is hell. I yes. guess it is because Karis no, is in hell. No, no, it's, it's, it's just the light. Because... It's just the white. The white light uh, throws you. But like Chris, that, that heaven never hell. gets off its fat ass in, this, in the, <laughs> any of these true. movies. It's very true. <laughs> it's just the devil comes in, fucks with people, is raping people, cutting people's heads off left and right, running riot on the natural world. <laughs> yeah, yes. and God's like, whatever, man. That's uh. cool. <laughs> so I guess My he cursed, tired, what am I supposed to do? Just, I guess he cursed so much that he actually impressed the devil, and he's like, all right. <laughs> Let's open it up. Let's open it all up here. And th- Whoa, I was fine with all of that murder and rape and everything else, but that potty language, I'm going to come down and throw <laughs> lightning bolts at you. And we Never even, seen someone so angry. We get to see the <laughs> blackface Jesus statue there in you all go. of its glory uh, here. <laughs> of course. And that's one time where I was like, hey, man, when they described what that blackface Jesus yep. looked like, mm-hmm. I had it all in my head. <laughs> Didn't need to see I'm, that prop look, come out. Look, I'm just glad that they tore that statue down. Okay. It's, yeah. It's, it's not. It's not up anymore. It's down. You know what? Yeah. The Gemini Killer is just taking down statues. We got to give it to yes, him. It's Hand it to true. him. True. Um. You know. So Father Morning wakes up here and he's like, "Damien, you have to fight." And this is. It's one of the only um Jason Miller actual lines in the movie. He, you know, Karis sort of snaps out of it and Bill, shoot me now, kill me now. And George C. Scott just fucking blows him away, man. <laughs> it's a pretty cool. Don't gotta ask me twice. It's a great, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great climax, actually. You got it. <laughs> so you went into the. So he was basically restrained in this mental world. You walked in there and you shot him. Is that what happened, <laughs> yes. dude? Yes. And that's and you know to have the <laughs> detective. Kidder, uh, just a quick question. Uh, on October fourteenth, uh, you came in and you broke the subject's nose. Okay. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. Uh, you yep. came in October fifteenth. Yelled at him a bunch. October. 16th, yeah, that's right. Yelled yes. at him some more. And then October seventeenth, you came in and shot him four times in the chest. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> And, got <laughs> and, I, and you also it seems like you skinned a priest alive as well is what i'm gonna guess <laughs> now that wasn't me that was the devil <laughs> i mean it's it's fucking great i mean dude he shoots him a bunch of times and then he goes up we do get a fucking headshot man insane. just yeah. uh, in case there's just one last scare you better blow this dude's brains out it kind of yes. rules. I mean, the, the priest comes back to life for a second and also like says some more stuff that helps, I think, a little bit. You yeah, know? he he encourages Damien to fight it. He's like, yeah. Damien, fight! You so know. I guess you got to give Father Morning the assist is the idea. Yeah, sure. uh, yeah assist with an asterisk, dude. You know, <laughs> I, I don't think that guy was in his right no. mind. I mean, half his fucking head just got ripped uh, off. No, I mean, Kinderman's the E-wing here for, for sure. <laughs> he's, he's, he's putting it to the hoop. Hey, Patrick, watch my slam dunk <laughs> Oh, man. And then, yeah, the lights kind of like, and this is, it's funny, Eric, again, you're totally right on this stage play thing because it's so theatrical right here. After that all happens, all the light in the cell sort of turns back to normal. You know, yes. all the stuff goes away. We won. Now free me, blammo. Yes. You know, it all calms down. But, you know, the movie can't be restrained. We need something else, a little useless cherry on top of the burial scene for <laughs> half a second. <laughs> it, it is half. It's Yeah, I don't know why we couldn't have had a little more of this. It's very mo- too short. Yeah, you need more or none. Yes. Like, let, it, let, it, let it stay for a minute. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, because what there's, what the tombstone is telling us here uh, pepperoni and sausage uh, is it, what it's you know it's his is you know date of birth obviously and then interesting i didn't know we did this for you know people of the clergy the year that he entered uh into the priesthood is on his tombstone 1957 but it says you know damien Karras died in 1975 so it's yeah. like it's saying like you know 
what this wasn't Damien. You don't remember Damien Karras this way. Mm. He was dead in 1975, yeah. regardless of all this other horse shit that happened in this movie, <laughs> basically. But yeah, it's like I I had to fucking actually rewind it on Shutter and just pause to look at the dates for a second because it is so fast that I didn't even like take it all in. Yeah, it's really quick. Look, you want to think want a, a song to swell or just yeah, the credits like, kind of over it. Like, yes. Yeah. yeah, and like give me maybe like a hella because it's like it's George C. Scott and I think Grandel Bush in the cemetery. Sure. Give me a chopper shot of them at the gravesite, you know. Yeah. Cause also what the movie in this theatrical cut doesn't explain here is why the fucking grave is open. And that's because at some point in the movie, George C. Scott has Karis's body exhumed, and we're told that in the casket is not Karis, but that other priest that went missing yeah that's mentioned once in this <laughs> cut and thrown away that dude's body was in the coffin yeah okay um, yeah, yeah. so it's like it's because that's why else is his fucking grave open like that there was a whole uh exhumation thing which the, was cut from the film it's it's a really the director's cut does a lot of fine tuning in the really smart like places you really are like places we've mm. mentioned in this episode where it could have used it like he really did know exactly what he was going for and of course fucking fox fucked it up uh yeah. but yeah I, I i don't i never like this ending i think it should just end with Karis getting his head blown off yeah sure yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah that's morgan creek, creek by the being, way uh, this... escorted in handcuffs yes <laughs> out morgan, of the hospital morgan creek is the studio that fucked this all up by the way not fox oh morgan creek sorry um oh fox just served as the yeah distributor for it uh anyway so that is the end of The Exorcist 3. We'll go around the horn here. Uh, start with you, Chris Cabin. Thoughts and uh, final thoughts and recommendations. Oh, big recommendation. I, I really do like this movie quite a bit. Uh, there are, you know, it's not perfect for sure. And I think at least the first time I saw it, a lot of it was coming off of Exorcist 2, which is a dog and terrible. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, and in response, I think this is very good. And like a lot of this stuff... Uh, and like I could see what why people would say it like it has a very theatrical quality to it, but like to me they use the close ups correctly to make it not feel that way at all. Like mm -hmm. to me, I wasn't feeling like I was just waiting for people to talk. Like I was taking in the space for a lot of it. Um, and I think this is a movie that's about is eerie, and like all the little notes and all the little things that are like maybe a little annoying are also things that make the mood more interesting. Like this is an, a mood a, a movie where I actually believe. Like, this world has been inhabited by the devil. Uh, little weird things are happening all the time. Um, right. I, I, it, it just struck me. All of it struck me as very uh, good on mood uh, and not so good on deaths. So I understand that, and that is why it's a four and not a five for me. <laughs> uh, Eric Siska. Yeah, I, uh, it's not a recommend for me. I just feel like I, I Brad Dourif, God tier, George C. Scott, always a fun guy to bring to a party. Um, <laughs> I, there's elements I like here. I think it would work as a stage play. I don't think it's very cinematic. I feel like it's a stage play that's being filmed as a television movie or something. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just, there's too many, a few things too, too much that I can't get fully behind this movie, but I understand why people like it. Totally. Uh, Steve Sadak. Yeah, uh, it's a light recommend for me because the, uh, the first time I saw it, I think it's, I, I liked it less the second time, like I said. I, I think the first time I was kind of more intrigued with it. Last night I was a little less so, so I'm going to split the difference and say light recommend. Um, I, I agree with a lot of things Eric has said. I also like, I love The Exorcist. I just do. I love the, the original. It's like one of my favorite movies, period. Uh, yeah. I, uh, already said it's very cozy. This movie does speak to a lot of those things so like it's interesting but i also like the ending of that movie is so final it's just your classic like there should have never been a sequel like you know oh, what i mean yeah. like oh yeah when you see uh father dyer just crying about that fucking son of a bitch you know what i mean like knowing his friend is dead and like the fact that these two guys are like hey let's go to the movies it's like this sort of beautiful homage to not even homage to sentiment to the idea of like what movies can do and then to be like yeah and then later on no 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 it, actually the devil went back into his body and it's like all right i got it yeah i got it guys <laughs> uh, and i also by the way i turned i will say i turned off exorcist 2 because i was so fucking bored so this is way better than that so there you go light <laughs> recommend yeah man um i i would say big recommend for me i i dig on this film chris i like what you said about this movie really feels like the devil is in the world. And I, I think what's interesting is 
and it's not a fault of the first movie, but it feels way more centralized. Yes. Mm. Uh, as far as where the evil is located. So much so that it feels like it's it's entirely inside this townhouse in, in Georgetown. But like this movie, because granted, it's not a ton of locations like we were saying, but, you know, you're going to different places. And, you know, because of like the falling down esque or fallen rather, uh, yeah. uh, you know, body jumping and all of it, it, it makes it feel like the devil's got his uh, hands in, in more pies around the community. Still all within Georgetown apparently but uh you know it just it feels a little wider in that way yeah. um but yeah the exorcist it's just it's it is one of my favorite movies i love the score so much it is a bummer that they only put it in a little bit here at the beginning like have that shit roll over the credits yeah. please cuz it's oh, we yeah. got some churchy sound and opera shit get that out of this bravo, movie bravo, Come bravo, on. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> oh yeah it's fucking great it's fucking great um but there you go 50-50 ish here on we hate movies <laughs> folks and you know what that's totally okay. We just had an adult conversation about a motion picture some of us like. <laughs> uh, that is going to do it for this episode. If you want more We Hate Movies, of course, check out patreon.com slash We Hate Movies. We got a We Love Movies episode on that feed all about John Carpenter's OG 1978 Halloween Woo. fabulous film, fabulous episode. The Spooktacular is underway, of course, and that is going all throughout the Patreon selections as well. Steve, we doing something creepy on uh, Animation Damnation? Very creepy. Uh, we're doing Ah, Real Monsters, which is a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. yeah long- I, haven't, I haven't revisited that show in years. Exactly. So that'll it's be a long time coming for uh, AD. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and of course, terrifying shit on Melro 210. Billy Campbell is present. So, that's, <laughs> so there's, sc- your, there's your scares so for scary. that. We are doing so. a singable commentary track for the first Friday the 13th motion picture from 1980. That should be a lot of fun. That'll be on Patreon. Hell yeah. Uh, and of course, here on the free feed, we hate movies. Spooktacular 22 continues. Uh, Steve, what's going on here uh, next week? We are ending the spooktacular, sadly. It has to, all Aww. good things, et cetera. So fucked up. It's um, fucked up, dude. With our good friends, uh, James Janice and Chelsea Rebecca from the Dead Meat Podcast and YouTube Ooh, channel. Yeah. And the only thing we can think to talk about is Leprechaun 2. <laughs> do, you think, do you think our good Dead Meat friends were like, you know, we're fucking horror experts, those guys love horror movies too. Why are we just their leprechaun? People? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Like in a horror movie, you get cursed sometimes. That is very right. Uh, so until next week, when we welcome our dead meat friends back on the program, I'm Andrew Jupin, Steven Sadak, Eric Siska, Chris Cavan. Take it easy. We all go a little mad sometimes. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? Sometimes. That is what I... Zombies have entered the building. They're at the door. They're coming in. It is time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. They're coming to get you, Barbara. He's sick for fuck's sake. He's seen one too many movies. Now, Sid, don't you blame the movies. Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. What the fuck are you in the What an excellent day for an exorcism. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>